the coffee. Wow. So I nice. was, I was amazed. So good coffee, and, good thing. Even the baristas were like, we've never seen this before ever. So it's never happened here. <laughs> Pay it forward. So I was excited because they opened another register of Safeway. Like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but no, that's what, uh, and throughout the whole day, uh, good things have been happening. So people have suggested to me buy a lottery ticket. Buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I already did. I already did win on a lottery ticket. I so uh, I got a free ticket. I won a free ticket. So well, perhaps you should just set your calendar to stay. Uh, after I, got, after I got checked out at Safeway, I figured if they opened up a new one, just as I brought my cart, it was time to buy a lottery ticket. Ah, uh, nice. yeah. <laughs> Actually, and then I was talking with somebody. Uh, that uh, was cutting my hair today oh. and she said oh you'd be the second person that I knew that won the lottery and it's like really and she says yeah I had uh, someone in a couple of days ago that said that he won the 85 million jackpot in the United <laughs> States whoa so it was like, oh, okay, because she said 85 million, and it's like, that's not possible for Canada, it must be the States. And she says, yeah, he was, he won it, uh, won it from the States. So I didn't think that that was a thing that non Americans could um, win the lottery from the States, but apparently it, you, you can, you can't do it here. You you have you have to be from here in order to uh, win the win the uh, national lottery. So, so where where are you? Canada, Calgary, okay. Okay. same place okay. as uh, Adrian, same okay. place as Jim. Jim also lives in my city. He lives. Yeah. What what? Just north of the university, if you want to. <laughs> north of the yeah, and I live close to uh, Westbrook Mall. So right. I live in an area that is just riddled with crime. So, in fact, there was one guy that uh, decided to have his uh, bike out, and they would uh, ride their motorbikes. And it was just, just super annoying. Uh, and because they were making so much noise. And then I seen on, um, he went on to um, uh, Next Door Neighbor, uh, an app, and uh, was asking people, does anybody know if they've seen a bike? And he showed the picture of his bike and he says, oh, our, my bike was stolen from here. And it was like, well, you got to keep it locked up or, you know, or you could have spent the $40 a month and, you know, put it in the underground garage like uh, other sensible people have, but. You think? Uh, do you think maybe somebody who was annoyed by the noise decided to uh, steal it and sell it to somebody who lives? I I I doubt it. There is a lot of crime in this area, so that is more to the case of they saw an opportunity to steal a bike, took that up opportunity, and now are selling it somewhere. You know, yeah, somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah. Well, there seem to be some people who, who like uh, running up and down Trochild uh, uh, in the middle of the night with their motorcycles. With their motorcycle, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like there. I don't know. There's a I don't know. There's a subset of motorcyclists who I, I think they deliberately make uh, 
uh, make them their machines as noisy as possible. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Like. Oh uh, yeah. I think that I think the technical term is asshole. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, that Carolyn. That was not directed at you. That was directed at the motorcyclist. Yeah, who was just yeah. like, well, well, yeah. that was a nice thing to <laughs> walk right yeah. into. Yeah. 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 Now, yes. Now Welcome, I do, Kyle uh, uh, and Brian. I, 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 I do occasionally witness a motor. Uh, do do sometimes witness a motorcycle. Oh, that's actually sort of a perfectly reasonable sound level. <laughs> yeah, know, it, it's well, not like all motorcycles are assholes, but. <laughs> Oh, these guys were. And then, well, he found out the hard way that you don't just leave your bike just sitting there. So, but he'll never get that back. But, oh, well. Yeah. Basic, basically, I find it hard to sympathize with, some, with somebody who, to, who has a very noisy machine that gets stolen. <laughs> yeah, well... What are you gonna do? Does Polly want a cracker? No, I think she wants. I'm not sure what uh, Yoshi here wants right now. I Yoshi think she wants me to sit in the chair. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Hello, Birdie. Yeah. Very pretty. Birdie. Hi, Birdie. Hi. <laughs> you're looking so at the I get... screen and you're wondering, like, where's where's that sound coming from? Aren't you? Yeah. Oh, she tried to bite Vincent. <laughs> trying to bite me? Well, she can try all she wants. So I, I don't think she'll be successful. Can, uh, oh, please. Thank you. For losing you. Thank you for what? So, Some birds can yeah. be house trained. Birds can be house trained, yeah. I think so. Yeah, depends on what you mean. So she yeah. <laughs> pretty well knows um, where she's allowed to be and where she's allowed to go to the bathroom, but not perfectly. Other birds know it better than her. Okay, go on. Uh, <laughs> um, but some birds are wild. We just had two green cheek Conyers we were boarding that uh, could barely handle being out of the cage. Mm. Uh. So, but, and she can still fly? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's full flighted. Oh, okay. Um, In the bird she... world, it's, it, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but it's not popular to clip the wings. Yeah. Uh, similar to uh, flying cats. Yeah, yes. similar. Uh, would she, uh, do you think she'd hang around? I hope you're breaking up again, Jim. Yeah, Something about humpback whales and time travel. That's all I got. No parrots on that record. Uh, yeah, Jim, can you move moves, your? Uh, can you move uh, your? Able to fly free broke. outside the. We hear audio, but your video is frozen. You might have to just turn off your video if you have low bandwidth at the time. Yeah, that might give help. That a shot. No, it, it, if you can move your I'll laptop by, by closer to your, your can you move your laptop closer to um, your uh, Wi-Fi? And that then, depends uh, what the source of the slowdown is. Right. Yeah. It may have nothing to do with the Wi-Fi. Oh no, he has a pretty crappy Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm not. Sure I always like to give bad advice or... in this situation. Like, turn the printer off. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best oh ron is here try Let's printing see. in landscape mode see what happens i i have this suspicion that uh uh that's the uh that it's something to do with the uh uh laptop itself being rather old and i uh that could be yeah uh have you tried moving the laptop closer to the um sun or to the <laughs> no, closer to Align the line at north south <laughs> Wi Fi source because yes. that helps you. Yeah. So, so so that's what I'm about to do. Yeah. <laughs> Along that line, Kyle, really counterproductive. Try putting it, try locating your router right on top of the microwave. 
<laughs> and then yeah, no, that, I don't think that would work. Uh, Welcome, Rob and Ron, who's hiding right now. But I, but I know your, I know your pain, Jim, because uh, I had trouble with the computer. So yeah. now I actually have a working computer. There are some things that where it seems where, where it seems to help to just totally reboot the thing to to to, to restart it that there might uh, there might be some things that are running that get sh uh, get that interfere with things and get, then they get shut down when I just shut down restart so I'm gonna try the eh what the heck I'm gonna I'm gonna move to next to the uh, uh to the wi-fi see how see what see whether that does any good and if and one variable at a time yeah yeah <laughs> yes exactly we gotta do science tonight yeah oh uh, well that mm. leaves me out but i ben, just ben susan garbeck i didn't realize susan yes that's who i am today me. Mm. Oh, hey, we got two more who need to be admitted. All right, we're getting some people now. Where is Susan at? Uh, somewhere. She was on a plane just the other day. No, she was some sort of a meeting in Dallas. I'm not sure. That's right. Yeah, it was Dallas. Dallas, who shot JR? I forgot who shot JR, but I don't know. I was well, told. Ah, uh, okay. And then, of course, the Simpsons did like a sort of parody on that. Who shot Monty Burns? <laughs> Everyone should know that. Does everybody know that answer? Was it Maggie? Yes, it was Maggie. Oh, that's right. Wait, yeah. We lost Ron. He's coming back. And Bill's on his way in. All right. Bill. Hey, Jane. Hey, Jamie. Hey. Hi. Good morning. How are you guys? You know, Jane, there is a song about you. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's by the uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. They are not bare naked, or are they ladies? But they are an 80s and 90s Canadian group. I know who they are. Their music. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think one of them lives in uh, near Syracuse, New York now, doesn't he? Uh, oh, I don't know where, where they are. They have since long since uh, broken up. So. Right. Yeah. Not like they were they were always good friends it's just they just <clears throat> and they just said yeah it's they made their money and one of their songs is jane isn't there a starship song named jane, jane? <clears throat> yep that's a good one i was yeah. just just listening to that <clears throat> Ago. So yeah, I had a good day today, all because of what happened earlier. So I'm, I'm, oh. I'm. You have glad. to tell us again, Vincent, for those who who joined later. Yeah, yeah I, just, uh, I was uh, standing in line at uh, my favorite coffee shop downtown. Struck up a conversation with the guy in front of me. He. Uh, was curious to know if I was uh, a regular there. And and then w one of the baristas said, hey, Vincent. And uh, he says, oh, you are a regular here. And it's like, yep, they know. I said to him, I said, yeah, they know me very, very well. And, uh, and uh, uh, he goes up to um, Karen and says uh, oh what does uh vincent drink and she says oh usually he has um a spritzer um non-alcoholic spritzer and um she said and he says oh okay well i'll buy him one then so 
she wasn't going to force the issue of getting a spritzer because what I ordered was a little bit more expensive, but she absorbed the cost of it anyway. So he paid for my coffee. So Aww. that's really nice. Oh yeah. I was, I was almost in tears uh, after that. So because cool. it's just, you know, when you're surrounded by assholes, it's kind of like there's always that one special person that's really, really super nice. So. It's refreshing to have uh, pleasant people to interact with. Yes. Yeah. And he was a pleasant guy and and he was there for a business meetup because, of course, um, uh, that's just where I go to was downtown. And that's usually business people meet up for whatever they're doing you know trying mm -hmm. to money off of other people and i'm sure that's what the business was about but i didn't pry or ask or anything like that so but uh yeah it was a good conversation and he bought my coffee for me so that was nice very nice sorry so, so who's sweet. in charge tonight i am Ben, Can't you tell? Yeah. I'm I'm Ben Susan Gerbic tonight. Yeah. So <laughs> Who, who's saying I am Ben? Oh Ben yeah. Susan Gerbic. Oh I got yeah. it. I see you there. Yes. I I even uh, am working out of her house. You know, just because. Yeah. I see yeah. that. Right. I see that. And Where I started. I started Hamilton? recording. Oh yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no cat. So, <laughs> we're the the cats must have gone with her on on vacation. I'm sure. I'm you know, sure um, they flew to Dallas with them. I went ahead and started the recording early just because I figured Susan would like to hear all of our conversations since she misses Everything out on that part. Everything we said about she's... her? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all the bad stuff we're saying about her since she's not here. Mm -hmm. Where did she go? Wait, where did she go? She went to Dallas oh, to a magic conference with Mark. Puppy. Oh, she's in Dallas? Oh. A puppy in Dallas, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I, I hear she went to visit the book suppository. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. So, in that local, I take it that I take it that's for shitty books. Yes, <laughs> exactly. There you go. Good one. <laughs> so, local, uh, local, uh, school of my province. I um, look at uh, there's a uh, Twitter Twitterverse, and uh, they were talking about a horrible, horrible teacher in Central Alberta that equated uh, Nazism with uh, with indoctrination of LGBTQ students, kind of thing. So, and uh, the backlash against her was quite severe. Fortunately, and she uh, got fired. So, but, yay! Goodness. And it was a Catholic wow. school system too. So, <laughs> yeah, and she's uh, and she's uh, one of the um, one of the uh, um, siblings or a family member to uh, one of the hateful right wing groups that are uh, prominent in central Alberta. So, mm -hmm. so uh, this guy that uh, is called um, uh, Nate Pike, he, uh, he actually tweeted out the letter that, that the, um, mm -hmm. the school gave out, you know, for public to, to do the public and said that she was definitely fired from her position, so. So what do you call a Canadian Trumper? Uh, I, I don't know. Conservative. No, that's, that's not far enough. Was when I was there. Are we going to get the punchline? Yeah, I, I thought there was Sorry. a joke in there. Like, like a maple mega? I don't know, like. <laughs> I was just That's throwing good. out the question. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, her ilk, uh, which.
which is called Take Back Alberta. They are they are Trump they are Trump lovers, that's for sure. Although they're very silent on it. <laughs> so they're quite careful of associating themselves with uh Republicans, but they are essentially themselves, I guess the equivalent of Republicans. So so TVA is the equivalent to MAGA? In a sense, yep. Mm. Oh no. Oh yeah, they're terrible. And they uh they're actually they're actually telling they're actually they they actually uh uh dictate to uh, our premier <laughs> on uh, what she can cannot do so mm -hmm. which is fairly frightening does your premier listen yeah oh yes yes she does well even though even though she denies it but it's like <laughs> yeah we kind of know what's happening so the wicked witch of the west disgusting <clears throat> so as long as yeah so cat sort of came into the topic so i think uh, i'll just I, I think i'll share this um are you closer to your um yes uh, yes that's why you're doing a lot better <laughs> that's good i like that i like yeah. it <laughs> that's great i'm true <laughs> so, uh, instead of box you should have a basket so it'd be a basket basket oh, very good yes yes anyway yeah, it's amazing how many of the cats uh, will end up playing with the box that the toys that their owners bought for them. You know, they play in the box instead of actually using the toy. Or the, well, uh, the children are the same. Yeah, that's true. So let's see. Tonight we have. Um, Bill, up, round one. Uh, oh, Rob, for two. Uh, Peggy, for round three. Carl, for four. And Deborah, as the bonus. Do we need to rearrange that schedule, or is everyone good with uh, those being uh, in that order? It's okay with me. Okay. I object. No, I'm kidding. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Objection noted. And ignored. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I actually. Let's see, it's eight thirty. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think we have everybody, and then appears Mono. Look at that. Right. We're getting Mono. Go. So I can, I can. I accidentally stay. hit mute on you right as because you approved Mono right as I was about to click Mono. You need, there you go. How dare you, sir? Your co-host uh, duties are revoked. Oh. That's fine. I love it. I Welcome, can stay Mono. I can right. stay up for the whole night. Mono, yeah, we got Brian Cody. Yes. Um, let me ask before uh we create breakout rooms, who is all uh leaving, leaving early? early tonight? I'm good I, for two uh, rounds, usually. I'm yeah, gonna I, stay Brian, for the whole night. Carolyn. Yeah, I I usually uh leave after two rounds. <laughs> Okay, Jim. Carolyn usually makes the third, third, third I think round. I saw Mono's lips move, but no sound. I, I leave at nine. Is microphone okay. working, Mono? Uh, yeah, well, hang on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can Vincent hear you. got his coffee paid for this morning, so maybe he should stick around a little longer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it might be your lucky day today. You got free coffee, oh, so you're well, energized, yeah. right? So yeah. well, and luck is in his luck. favor today. It is. He may yeah. win it. <laughs> I had two people suggest that I should get lottery tickets today. So 
There you go. Yeah. There's yeah. even a story behind those yeah, people as Kevin. well. So. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, 500 right. million on Saturday. I mean, Ooh. Yeah. yeah, it was just a fantastic day today. Yeah. All right. Kevin is joining. Welcome, Kevin. And my brother definitely will not make it. He's up in the Great White North this, uh, this week. Wow. Up in that's Toronto. True. That's not an excuse. Is there <laughs> no internet where he's at? No, it's Canada. They don't have internet. Oh yeah. No, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, yeah. everything is on fire again. Our our uh, air quality oh, no. was awful today. Really? I'm saying it's from Canada again. Yep. Oh, no. Darn it, Canada. Yeah, we got the thunderstorms today. That'll clear it out. Oh, yeah. you're lucky. All right, uh, I'm going to step away for just a second, uh, and I'll be right back, and then I'll uh, make the breakout rooms. Rob, how are you feeling? Oh, better. Thank you very much. Are you still stunned? No. Oh. Good. Apparently, they broke them up with that procedure, but they're supposed to still take weeks and weeks to pass, quote unquote, wow. which might be painful. And they gave me pretty strong pain medication. And I've not noticed anything of any sort since. I'm a little weirded out by that. Three weeks. So you're, oh. Oh, so you're, so you're still stoned. Yes. <laughs> well, oh, Rob, you had, Rob, you had kidney pebbles. stones? Yeah. Uh, you, Rob, you, Rob, you had kidney stones? A kidney stone, yeah. Yeah. My wife, two years ago, my wife had um, kidney stones. And it took, she had um, ultrasonic treatment to break up the stones. That's what I had. Yep. And it took seven times. For one stone, it took seven oh, visits. Seven sessions. Whoa. It, it really it wasn't. It really wasn't. But it depends on the consistency. And the, the tough thing, we live on a little island. And there's no ultrasonic system here. So the first time she had to fly to Bangkok for the first treatment. And then um, take a ferry to the mainland for the other six. We thought it would only take one or two treatments and that's it. But wow. it, it took seven treatments until it was finally resolved. Do you know uh, what the size was? Um... It was less it, it was small it wasn't that big um five millimeter no that, that's me that's medium mine was six and i looked up the uh the di the average diameter of the tube it was stuck in and it was like three or four so that's not good <laughs> <laughs> i could do the math that's not good yeah, yeah my wife had the same yeah it was the same same issue but <laughs> when they use the ultrasonic it broke up the, the stone initially i think like there's two pieces but it, you know it depends on the consistency of the stone and how many treatment it takes the doctor said it usually takes um, two to three treatments on the average. I was not told that at all. I was told uh, one shot should do it 85 or something like that percent success. Maybe they've changed the technology. My, mine worked what? in one shot. Really? Oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, we were shot all at I can say is thank goodness I don't have stones. Okay. Or no, that I kind of stone know. anyway. I don't know. Carl, Carl tells I, I don't, me he's a repeat sufferer, so I, I'm hoping that's I've not going to yeah, be I've had. Oh, I, I I actually lost count of how many kidney stones I yeah. had. It's at least eight. Really? Ooh, so wow. When the the so back in 2018, when they they, they did the X-ray, they actually saw like there was like uh, five at the same time, <laughs> including oh, the one that was eight millimeters. Carl yeah, is a walking thing. stone factory. Yeah. 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 yeah my that worked. Thing. Who, who worked? Is, is it just biological. I mean, is it some diet or what causes? Oh, it? It, 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 if you're, if you're online and Google what causes kidney stones, it sounds like a pseudoscience thing. There's like yeah. 55 million things. It could be this, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. There's, yeah. there's not a great deal of certainty there. Could be too, genetic, much calcium, too, too much calcium, too much soda, too much calcium, too much, calcium, too much yeah. of this fruit, too much of this. You know, all right. Yeah. I can't live my yes, life. Yes. Yes. Well, if you Am had I... that many, you could save them all and make them into necklaces. <laughs> oh, no, there you go. not big enough for that. Yeah. See, uh, in my wife's case, my wife's case, it was caused by a medicine she's taking. She takes Topamax, and the side effect of Topamax is the. Oh, that's great. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, that's great when that happens. Yeah. I, I was on something which gave me pancreatitis, yeah. you know, so that's, yeah. that's oh, great. Geez. Wow! So you need to go. You, you need to go onto the enterprise and get them to to uh, transport them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? But Jamie, that'd be but, so much easier. Yeah. Between treatments, is there a minimum time between treatments, or can you just have it successive days? 
No, I think she had to wait two to three weeks in between. I, I think three weeks in between treatments. Oh, really? Yeah, it's three it weeks. Has a fair amount yeah. of internal bruising. Oh. Yeah. I, I must have had some really high tech equipment because I didn't like, yeah, I read about that, that you could be even see bruises on the outside. I, I saw nothing. I felt nothing. It was like, it was just like magic. It was like it was transported out. Very weird. Yeah. So we had a choice yeah, between using, um, yeah, we had a choice between using laser ablation or the ultrasonic. And the laser ablation, they say, would take one treatment and it would be finished. But uh, I think the insurance, the insurance wouldn't pay for laser abrasion. They would pay for the ultrasonic. Well, that's an invasive thing, so it's got its own dangers. And, and, and that's not 100% either. That was something like, they gave me the choice. Do this one, it's like yeah. 85. That one's 95. Well, it's still 5%. It's not going to work. And then you're going to go inside, and it's all that danger, and it's more expensive. And I don't know. I'll go with the, the one with the lower odds, because it's not that much lower, and it's not invasive. So I right. made the right decision. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll just take a few treatments. But at the end, since my wife had like seven treatments, it cost much, much more than what the laser treatment Jeez. would have had. Wasn't there so, a local shaman you could have gone to in Thailand? Yeah, Rob, you should try Reiki. <laughs> I'm sure there's a homeopathic thing you could buy at any local drugstore that would do. Try that's Reiki. Right. Kale. Press just eat kale. kale. Just eat kale. That's right. It yeah, solves everything. Like acupuncture. Cranberry juice. Well, from a homeopathy yeah. perspective, obviously the best thing would be diluted kidney stone. Obviously. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> except, except i'm thinking about where they get those from uh, yeah how they collect them well, after the, all this diluted the point the, where there's no molecules left anyway so. right yeah. mm -hmm. well Just after all this conversation about stones complaining about my dislocated shoulder doesn't count <laughs> oh that's oh, why that's, that's one of the reasons i wasn't here last oh bummer is, oh, it, no. is, it, back, is it back in place it, it was back in place as soon as the doctor touched it. <laughs> I I mean, he he was amazed at how easy it was yeah. reduced. <clears throat> Jeez, terrible. Like, have you seen the movies where people just, just know how to do that? Ooh, here you go, snap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just going to bring that up too, Carl. It's like, it's I amazing wouldn't have paid that doctor more than 20 movies. bucks. I've seen it on TV. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go into our rooms now? Yes, actually, I was just getting ready to uh, create the breakout rooms. Wunderbar. Let's create some breakout rooms. And do we have enough? Let's see. What... I see 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's three. Or four for each big breakout room. Do we want to have uh, more people per rooms or? Yeah, more, more rooms. Well, 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 if uh, well, it's well, it's, it's it's usually five. So doesn't five, have to be eight, five. I had eight, I had eight. a group this I had a group this small, and I made I made just uh, one less team. Yeah, we only had three people last week, so. Oh, I didn't even hear about these games until I saw them posted already. The, uh, the Saturday and Monday game? Yeah, not that I would have been available. We had like yeah. less than 24 yeah. hours warning for each one. Right. Because uh, unless we're going to have any more people join later, which I don't know if anybody knows if people are showing up late. Uh, Adrian might show up late. Okay. Karen well, usually shows Robin up is late. Likely then. Did anybody play either of those uh, smaller games with Susan? I did. I know Avi was yeah. there. So how many? Well, then I'm gonna. Oh, Avi, joined. Nice. Yeah, Avi joined at least for one I think of them. One day we had two teams. Yeah, we did two teams on both days because there was hardly two anybody teams on both up. days. Yeah, there weren't did, many. So people. Susan did all the categories, I assume, because it was yeah. Like, so you know, for Saturday she recycled previous things, and for Monday she actually made new stuff. Did you remember all of the old ones? Huh? Most of them, yeah. <laughs> So if we have fewer teams, are we going to have fewer category givers? No. Oh. That means there'll be like one team will have two. Subjects. Right, they'd have two. So, I mean, well, yeah. that's I don't think I don't, people are okay you don't usually it. do that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you would just no. go on. All right, but you only get five. Ben one time if it yeah. Yeah, for that team. He can't clone right. himself. Exactly. No, why? When, when one category is being done on that team, Ben goes there, and when the other category... I mean, if we do five breakout four. rooms like we normally do, it, we're looking at three to four participants That's per true. room. That's not terrible. Someone would get Ben twice, that's uh, all. 
that's fine. I'm I'm okay. Let's do that because we're going to have more people join later. So okay. let's, yeah. let's just do the usual five rooms. So, all right. Yeah, now let's make sure that we don't have. I don't know, Monday we had like three people per team, and if someone left, there were only two people left in the team. Yikes! That was us last week. Did, did anybody get zeros? Um, I don't think so. We might I mean, have gotten zero have on somebody something. who doesn't know. Anything no, we got about the one. Company. We got one on. Oof. Rob, you need to be in room. You guys know that today is National Lighthouse Day? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. They're trying to get people to share their photos of lighthouses. <laughs> I thought but, that was last week. The last week was the first I saw of it, said it was today. Wouldn't it be great if that video from a few years ago got like a million downloads today? <laughs> Uh, which and, did, did you say the, who's, uh, who's with doing the classic categories? lighthouse category? Yeah, Deborah's and, doing bonus, and she's not here yet, right? I'm I'm on for one of them, right? Yes, you're uh, you're round two, Rob. Okay. If that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like the way Ben is asking. You shouldn't ask Ben. You should just delegate. Yeah, this is what you're on. This is what you're on. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Okay. By the way, National the Lighthouse State. Build through consensus. National Lighthouse State was August 7th. A month ago. Well, happy belated well, then. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even buy a Lighthouse State gift. Oh, man. No, oh, I didn't either. All right, I think do, do, do. it was National White House Day today. <laughs> Everyone has to go to whitehouse.com. Whitehouse.com? Yeah, is that still a porn site like it used to be? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. I don't have multiple people that are leaving early in the same room, so. Whitehouse.com is going to disappoint you. It's um, <laughs> not, not porn anymore, huh? Darn. Tonight they're saying. I mean, I'm you... open minded. Everyone's got their own thing, but I would not say it's porn, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. The largest lighthouse right. in the United States is being displayed tonight. I think, no, un unveiled uh, Sunday at uh, Gillette Stadium. They have a lighthouse in the middle of nowhere at the, at the football stadium. Okay, go forth and create team names. Okay. Okay. Well, hello, Gail. Hello. Welcome. I just opened the room, so I will assign you now. Okay. I will assign you to... to, to... Put me in the room with Jamie, because I get, hardly get to talk to him. We're never in the same room. Oh, yeah, but that's a room that already has four people, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's some... Uh, rooms that only have three. Uh, all right, let's assign you to room one. All right, enjoy. Okay, thank you. What do you do, Susan, while you wait for people to come up with their team names? It's so lonely here. Hopefully you are enjoying your trip in Dallas. I will try to do you proud.
And I should have paid attention to the time because I need to re figure out how much time I should give everybody. 10 minutes, maybe. Welcome, Karen. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Awesome. I probably can't stay more than a round. Oh, okay. But I wanted to check in. I was thinking, I'm having fun, but you know what I would like to do? I would like to go be with trivia folks for a bit. Yay. Well, let's stick you on this room then. Room four, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. You're welcome. Okay, for some reason, it's only 60 seconds instead of the two-minute warning. Welcome back. Hopefully I gave you guys enough time. Yeah, we're good. And I saw that it's only set to 60 minutes for some reason, even though I'm using Susan's 
Yeah, it keeps flopping around. I don't know why it does that. Yeah, because I'm using her account, obviously. I signed in as her, so mm -hmm. I'll have to see if I can change that setting before we... The one it. minute notice? Yeah. Do you know where that is? Uh, yeah, I, I thought Rob? you had to set it on the website before you start a session, but I might be wrong. Oh, uh, okay. They're always futzing with things, so it's possible yeah. it's somewhere else now. Okay. Yeah, I was you looking send around out one for of those settings. Blasts first, Ben. Send send out the blast and then get, wait a minute and then send that out. Okay, that works. Hey, Brian Kirby's here. Hi. Hi, Karen. Hey. Hi, Brian. Yes, I know Brian. Brian hasn't been on in a while. Yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think I've ever played with Brian up until today. I don't think I have either, and he's on our team. Yeah. So Brian I'm out of his way for a few months i guess ben i have a question. too tired yes and um it's always good to see mono did yes. you know that we're being recorded no way thank you for sharing us uh, sharing that information with us vincent thought i just let you know thank you i don't know what i would do without that uh very uh, interesting piece of information <laughs> <laughs> okay my, uh, uh, my one dad joke for tonight exactly sure. welcome everyone to ben susan gerbic's trivia uh we are having game 179 tonight if that number is correct on yes, the spreadsheet all right and so, so we have for tonight we have bill doing round one rob round two Peggy, round three. Carl, round four. And Deborah will be doing the bonus, who hopefully will be joining us uh, in time. All right. Let's get some team names, shall we? Let me get to the right section. All right. Uh, team one. We always knew Navarro was contemptible. <laughs> That's a good name. Nice. <laughs> okay. Oops. Nice. We always believe that Nevero is con oh. Okay. And so change somebody was believed, it change believed the new. Oh. No. I, did say, I did say new. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I forgot to change that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I got it here. All okay. right. We always so, uh, knew that Navarro is contemptible. Okay. So Okay, which which one is Navarro? The one is contemptible. He just got convicted today. <laughs> yeah. For contempt. Yeah. For contempt. Can, yeah. can somebody now we see? have it from a court of law. I, well, I take it he's somehow connected to the whole Trump mess. <laughs> yeah, he, he refused yes. to testify in front of Congress. So he, oh. Yeah, okay. he declined uh, a congressional subpoena. So well um, well everyone except um for one person just went and gave and used the Fifth Amendment the whole time and he could have done that and he didn't. So now he's going to prison. Okay, team two, what is your name? Vincent. Oh, um, Canada is still burning. Oh no. Yes. Yeah, let's see. What what, what was it? A thousand fires at the moment? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I never I never read up on it. I just know that okay. that a little bit on it, but still okay. fires. Canada is still burning for team two. Okay. Still yep. burning. All right. Team three. <laughs> um, <laughs> one second. Ooh. That's pretty funny. Uh, can you say the name for the recording? Oh, okay. Burning Man, another name for a UTI. I love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I, re I recently had to take some antibiotics for one. <laughs> really? Oh, no. I'll be uh, right back. Yeah. Huh? You just reminded Vincent that he forgot to take some <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or he's feeling a burning sensation and can't wait. Oh, you never know. <laughs> okay, team four, what is your team name? Is Danny Masterson a fan of good grammar and complete sentences? Oh, 
What's the it's, update on that one? I haven't been paying attention. It's been 30 to that. years. Wow. Oops. I am unfamiliar. He was uh, uh, one of the actors from that 70s show. Uh, oh, all right. Movie. He's the one who uh, Scientology? got sen he was, sentenced. Yeah. He, yeah, the Scientologist that was giving women Cosby pills. So what's uh, the grammar in complete sentences? Uh, well, that sentence to if, life if he's something. a fan of good grammar, he's a fan of complete sentences, which means he'll have to serve the full 30 years. Mm. But he was sentenced to 30 years or li 30 years to life. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, team five. What is your team name? 22 years, a new high score. Be proud, boy. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> good Two job. references. All right. Not a, not a judicial related. And we're thing. all we're all hung up on trials, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Lock them up. Lock them up. That's the there proud little boy who wasn't even there, but he was just they had, had all his texts. That he was controlling everything, texting everybody. And he goes, <laughs> "Did you see all all the, all the photos that, <laughs> that were released after the fact with all like Republican <laughs> activists and and congressmen and people taking selfies with him, like in the months before?" Lock him up. Oh, somebody, really? Somebody released a montage. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So tonight, 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 game one seventy nine, season she four. Gave you the script, didn't she, Ben? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to do it from memory. I'm winging it, so we'll see. Oh, okay. Okay, we have team number one: Bill, Carolyn, Gail, and Janine. Their team name is. We always knew that Navarro is contemptible. And team two, we have Cindy, Mono, Rob, and Vincent. The team name is Canada is Still Burning. Team three, Brian, Jamie, Peggy, and Ron. Team name is Burning Man, another name for UTI. I love that one. That's a good one. We have team four, Jane, Karen, Carl, and Lee. And their team name is, is Danny Masterson a fan of good grammar and complete sentences? And last but certainly not least, team five with Jim, Kevin, Kyle, and soon to be Deborah. And their team name is 22 years, new high score, be proud, boy. Now, it occurs to me that 22 years is not nearly enough considering Masterson got 30 to life. <clears throat> yeah, it's not the new high school. Yeah. But for that trial, it is. Yeah. yeah. You know, a violent crime. They're looking at because January that was a violent crime Proud and there boys. were many, many victims. Well, Wait, which one? That's both, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was a physically violent crime yeah. that Masterson did. Right. Directly. Yeah. Versus contempt of Congress. Which is serious and not violent. But frankly, haven't we all had contempt of Congress? No, he was comparing it to the Proud Boys one, not the oh, contempt of Congress one. Yeah. Oh, never... contempt of Congress. I got it. Proud Boys was not contempt of Congress. It was... That, that was... Uh, uh, oh, there's Deborah. Seditious maybe, conspiracy. Seditious yeah. conspiracy. But of, maybe because uh, they didn't directly, to over... he didn't directly do the violence, maybe. Yeah, well, he was he was the general as they as everybody was saying on MSNBC last night, uh, mm -hmm. and trying to overthrow the government is <laughs> considerably more serious to me than even the violent crime of uh, rape. Yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, welcome, Deborah. Well, yes, welcome to everybody, and here is. Group one of questions, and I hope this works. People like my Shakespeare one, so little last time I decided to do another version of it. So I have got five quotations from Shakespeare, which I hope a lot of people actually know. Each one is worth two points. You need to give the uh, character who is speaking and the play in which it is spoken. 
And so we'll start. And? Huh? And? And. Or. It has to be or. And. One, one, be or. one, 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 we don't have to get credit. Or. Uh, no, one point each, and I only have five questions. Oh, okay. Oh, he's really asking ten questions. Okay. Who right. said it, and what, and what play? Character huh? said it. Uh, character and play. Okay. So character first, and then the play. Yes. That part. All right, Carl. You want to do the honors? Yep. Here we go. Thanks, sir. Three, two, one. Mute. Bill will have to unmute himself. Okay, so number one, if music be the flute of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may, appetite may sicken and so die. It happens to be the opening line of uh, a certain play. So who said it and what's the play? Number two. All the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Who is the character and what is the play? Three. By the pricking of my thumbs, Something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. Who's the character and what's the play? Number four. We will have rings and things in fine array. And kiss me, Kate, we will be married a Sunday. This is the character of an apostrophe, in case you were wondering. Yeah, what 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 is that stuff after married? Uh, that's O and an apostrophe. This one is two characters, but and I want either or both. If you know what either, you will know the other and the play. Ill met, Ill met by Moonlight Proud Blank. What jealous Blank? Fairies skip hence. I have swore, forsworn his bed and company. Terry Rash Wanton, am I not thy lord? So. A and B, both either or both of the characters and the play. Any questions? And I don't know how to do all this other stuff. Um, one question could it? Could the character and the play be the same sometimes? Possible, but not necessarily. And if so, I want both. I want that indicated. Okay. I'm totally confused by the the A capital A and AMP semicolon B. That, that what AMP, your team and AMP is an ampersand. So why not use just use an ampersand? Because I copy this for, from. Uh, uh, gotcha. From, it's a copy-paste issue, yeah. It's a yeah. copy-paste issue, yeah. So the ampersand, oh. number, the ampersand, ampersand number 39. Yeah, that's the... All right, go forth and uh, answer questions. 
And I will assign you, Deborah, to team five. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Got to say, I still don't understand five at all. I hope someone else on the other team does. All right. Good luck, sir. I'm going to go to room one since that is my team. For now. Yeah, he won't help us. Oh, yeah, I got all the yeah. answers. I'm oh, I'm good. a Shakespearean expert. No. Oh, that's I don't know any of these. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just said I, I knew them 50 years ago. I don't anymore. I don't, yes, I don't, I don't anymore. I don't know. I don't know my Shakespeare at all. I apologize. I recognize all except the first one. I don't even recognize the first one. Oh, I recognize you guys, it. it. You guys may have been awesome. better off with Susan. I don't know. Or does she not know a dang thing about Shakespeare either? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't. I've never I, talked to her I about don't it. know. Um, um, would that be Midsummer Night Stream or not? I think five is Midsummer Night Stream, right? I have no idea. Well, yeah, because there's fairies. Yep. But who is forswarning the bed, though? Is that all I remember is like the the donkey. <laughs> I don't know any of the. I, I, I don't ever know names of anybody ever. Like I said before, I have enough trouble remembering the names of people I know, let alone characters. Now I might be wrong about that, but I think that's Midsummer Night Dream. And for number um, five, you said, you. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know. So who was it? Was it Tuck? I don't know any of the names of the characters. Name Bottom? Bottom is a good name. It wasn't that the donkey? I don't know. Or I, I don't know. I know Bottom was in the play. Okay. And um, I keep thinking that's Kiss Me Kate, and that's the Broadway play, not the. That's the that's I know, the I was thinking it. like Kate Millie. Right right it's what? It's the it's what's the name of the play that Shakespeare wrote as opposed to the Broadway play about the play that Shakespeare wrote. Well Shaw wrote Pygmalion. So no, no. Kiss Me Kate was the Broadway version right. of this play. Right. And I know this one. I know this one. I know I know this. I'll ask Glenn, he'll remember it. Um, something wicked this way comes. Um, that So that's not, which is the one with the three witches at the front, at the beginning? Macbeth. That's Macbeth? Mm -hmm. So would that one be it? Because that sounds like, it does sound okay. like witches. Does I mean I don't know. You can say Macbeth. Okay. I I I was thinking of um of another one, but I'll buy that. I I you say I, it's the witches. Or maybe yeah. All the world's a stage. I know that. that I know that line. Three. That's not Hamlet. Yeah, probably is Hamlet. Yeah, because if we can at least come up with the play, then we have five, five points. points instead of, <laughs> you know, zero points. And probably it's going to be Hamlet, the character, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's not Yorick. <laughs> no. Or what was it, uh, alas? What, who was the skull he was holding up? <laughs> you know, it's like, York. York. Yeah, yeah, it was York. <laughs> so he's probably not saying it. <laughs> um, music. Oh, oh, Romeo. Romeo and Juliet. For which one? Oh, okay. Number one. Oh, yeah. Right. Good call. I don't know which one's saying it, but I would maybe Romeo. 
Yeah, I would say that was more likely. All right, we just need to figure out four and then we're good to go. We know this one. <laughs> like, like, like we know what we're good well, guess. Would, would it be one of the like king ones? Well, not King Lear. No, no, I know the play. I know this one. I, I just can't I know remember that's why the, I'm trying to Shakespeare name. It's my memory. I'll be back in a minute. I'll ask Glenn. She can, she's not upstairs yet. So we could be rattling off names of plays just in case. Yeah. Uh, we'll just pick one and throw it in there if we're not sure, just so that we, you know, we have a at least a chance of getting a point on it. Winner's Tale. Um, All right. Tempest. Let me see. Tempest in a teapot. What is that? <laughs> um, King Lear. King Lear. Uh, Richard the Third. I need to finish putting people's names in the rooms while we're working on this. Number three could be, I don't know if that's King Lear. Do you think it would be King Lear? I don't know. I'm going to go, I'm just going to stick with Macbeth. I don't know. That sounds more Macbeth this. Yeah. So Midsummer Night's Dream, we already have. Um... You know, I really enjoyed Shakespeare when I took it and and this was exactly what we had to do. We'd be given a quote and we had to, our tests where we had to say who said it and what was the context and, then, and who were they speaking we to. We are guessing on what's the, all the world's a stage. What play is that from? All the world's a stage. Do you know play that's from? No. No idea. Oh, I'll need to call people back or Carl will because give us time give us it's time the of the screw. as soon as you said it I knew it it's what how much time do you need it's what was it Gail Taming of the shrew oh, oh yes yes oh yeah yeah that's what I was trying to say there was like Taming of the shrew then there was Pygmalion Pygmalion there was different versions but that's the original yes yeah, we... so as soon as I as soon as I heard Penny of the Shore, I knew it was right. If I heard you, I'd have Okay, we need a character. We need a character yeah. though. The character is Procurio or something like that, I think. It's Prospero. the it's the man. Prospero? Pro no, Prospero is a different play, I think. Okay, well, I don't know then. Don't ask. I don't know. So you said Procurio? Yeah. Procurio? Uh -huh. Procurio. No. <laughs> I'm Wait, sure are we talking? Right <laughs> I know. Are we talking food here? Or... <laughs> I know that's what I was wondering. <laughs> I know who the character was. It was the yeah, fellow who I... came to the crew, right? We may not have the answers all right, Bill, but we're done answering, so we're yeah. good. We're we're yeah. ready to go back. You you have the ability to call people back, or you need me to do that for you, Bill? Uh, to close all rooms. Yep. Uh, yep. And unfortunately, we're going to get the one room. minute warning. Uh, we probably need to get only one minute warning. Okay. Yeah, if you're able to adjust it, you can set it to 120. We typically give people two-minute warnings. I don't know how to adjust it. That's fine. I think it's a system-level thing. Unfortunately, yeah. it's stuck to... People will yell at you and tell you if it's too soon. Yeah, okay. and, then we'll, we'll and then we'll open really the rooms get, back up again. They'll okay. really get upset if, if it just immediately kicks you out. That, right. that upsets people. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's always automatically set to one minute and they change it to make it two. Yeah. yeah. So it's 50 seconds, 49, 48. Well, I'll tell you, I would be more worried about this if I thought everybody else knew it. I think there'll be one or two people who will know. And if yeah. they're not on the same team, we'll only be in place. I just feel stupid because I took this in college. And oh, I, I used to know this. I used to know all of this. I've even watched some of these plays, but I can't remember these names. No. I actually I played, I played on the Broadway. Yeah. Just like I played in different um, musicals and operas in, in college as well. And some of them I just...
Susan said to say hi. Oh, hi, Susan. Oh. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Susan. <laughs> hi, Susan. <laughs> okay. Do oh, we have uh, everyone uh, back? So, we... so today, Susan is gender fluid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ben Susan, me <laughs> son of. She'd Susan. be surprised. Ben She'd Susan's be surprised like to hear ben, that. Ben Gorian. Ben Susan. ben Susan means son of Susan. Yeah. Is... I just love the way her her uh, room gets moved all over the world. Oh. Yeah. No, I I had to fly out to California just <laughs> it's to host. Trivia expensive tonight. for you to do yeah. this. Very you can't, you can't come gonna... to Saigon. <laughs> you can't come to Saigon, Ben, but you can fly to Yeah, exactly. I got to sacrifice. You probably got yeah. flown out there on the cost of a grant from the James Randi Foundation. Oh, that's exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm billing uh, I'm billing Susan for this. Broken to All right. House. Scores. Let's have some scores. No, of course, some answers. Have want, want some, you want some answers? We oh, got a answers. 10. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, I, I yeah, jumped the gun. Can we My make up our team. score before we... Before no, we, no. Um... I want all, all the scores are zeros oh. this round. I'm sorry. Oh, crap. Yes. Answers, please, first. Thank you. Okay. Answers for number one. <laughs> the play is Twelfth Night. Ah. And the plot is Duke Orsino trying to woo Duchess or Countess uh, Olivia. And it is Duke Orsino who opens the play with food, music is the food. If music is the food of love, play on. I will accept Duke, by the way. Will you accept John Wayne? No, I will not <laughs> accept John Wayne. <laughs> Okay. Oh, harsh. Number so my, two. My, my audio glitched and it's not in the chat. So I'm sorry. What was number one? What was the name of the number play? Number one, the character is. I got that. The play part? The play is uh, Twelfth Night. Ah, okay. Um, let's see. Number two, All the World's a Stage uh, was. Spoken by Jaquees in As You Like It. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> As I hate it. Jaquees? Okay. Also, <laughs> looks like Jock pronounced Jaquees. First name Jock, last name. Oh, Jock. J A Q U E S. Uh, yeah, that's uh, like a good rapper name. Yeah. <laughs> I like Jaquees. Jaquees B is you like? That, that, you know, Jaquees is the traditional pronunciation. You have to put Lil in front of it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the third one is the second witch from the Scottish play. Did we have to say the second? Can we witch? just say which a witch? No, uh, second is optional. Okay. If you got that, if you got that, I'm surprised yeah. and de uh, delighted. <laughs> uh, we we actually cursed ourselves because we did not write the Scottish okay. play. Yeah, the the Scottish play is so called because it is. I, 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 I know. But we're not in the theater, the so it's okay. Yeah. We're not yeah. the theater, so we can say. I, I typed it on my computer. If my computer crashes, so. So I'll know why. <laughs> okay. The third one, I heard this going back and forth. Um, most people got the play right. The character is kind of hard to remember. Yeah. His uh, name is Petruccio. Ooh. What can I say? <laughs> yes, Mono. Somebody was close. Something yeah. close. How Something close can we be? We got Procurio. Does that count? <laughs> no, uh, I'll give you anything with a capital P R. So Pinocchio is okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Pinocchio, there you go, Ron. <laughs> we get it. No, Petrucci, Petruccio. Uh, and the final one, uh, it is okay. A is Oberon and B is Titanium. Wait, 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 wait. What was the play in four? And the play is A Midsummer Night's Dream. The play in number four. Or the Scottish true. play. Or no, oh, Taming of the Shrew. Taming of the Shrew. Gee, I should. Which okay. th there, there was a Broadway play called Kiss Me, Kate that was based on it. Yep. Right. 
Okay. So, hmm. okay. And then so, the final one, uh, Oberon, the king of the fairies, Titania, the queen of the fairies, in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes. Yes, what was this, what was the line about uh, uh, is uh, Shakespeare age his outlook deepened and in Midsummer Night's Dream he reached bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Everybody uh, calculated nice. your scores. Are we ready? We have to have electricity in two days. Or should I ask for the answers this time because I asked for the scores yeah. first. I would just there you go. hang out with me for a little bit. Okay, team one. How Jamie, you cut your do? mic. We have five. Five. Jamie. Okay. Hey, Jamie. Paging Jamie. Jamie. Paging Jamie. Jamie. We can hear your conversation. Cut your mic if you're going to do that. I did. I muted him. Okay. Sorry. I was typing in the spreadsheet. Otherwise, I would have muted him faster. All right. Team two. What was your score? Canada is still burning. Sorry. I should say the team names. Yes. We got six. Oh, very nice. Oh, good so job. Mono. All right. Team three, Burning Man, another name for a UTI. <laughs> because we couldn't figure out which witch was which, we only got nine. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, actually, so such a one bummer. person got nine <laughs> on our team. The rest just watched. Yes, thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, team four is Danny Master and a fan of good grammar and complete sentences. Through a team effort, we got nine. Nice. Okay, and team five, 22 years, new high score. Be proud, boy. And that's how you have to say it. So, you know. I think we had we three. We got three. All uh, right. Yeah. Now, don't three. we get four? Because, don't we forget? Uh, does Oberon and Titania count as two, getting two? So that's a, it, it's sort of out of 11 or or, or I think no. that was an either no, or. No. And, and I technically or, or got Okra, so let's just count the one. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it was a vegetable. Well, we, okay. The, the character, both characters total of one one point. Okay. Okay. So it's a, so it's a, so it's three rather than four. Okay. All right. Are we ready for round two? Did you yep. get our score? Yes, yeah, I got everybody's score. Yep. Okay. Rob, you're up. Is it my turn? It is your turn. Apparently. You're round two. Last I checked. Okay. So this is my 91st category. I just looked at it. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Okay. Hope this doesn't uh, cause YouTube problems, but here we go. Wait, do I need to stop recording? So, uh, over for Thank my you, birthday, Rob. my wife took me to see. Back to the Future, the musical. And uh, we're going to be talking about Back to the Future, the film, on which it was oh. You said you enjoyed it greatly. It, uh, yeah, it was quite quite impressive. Uh, it, it, may be, it may bring back, as I, I read a couple of reviews, like the big Broadway, uh, big deal shows instead of like minor set changes and that kind of thing, because this was extravagant to the extreme. It was like a magic show. <laughs> in some cases. Wow. Okay, so here we go. This is, this is just for Ben to type in if he wants to do that, Back to the Future, and it is considered by critics and audiences to be one of the greatest science fiction films and among the best films ever made, in fact. In 2007, the U.S. Library of Congress selected it for preservation in the National Film Registry. Only something like 10 get added to that every year. Answer these questions concerning Back to the Future. Okay, muting. Who's got the muting powers? Uh, hold on. Uh, participants. So we're re immutable. All. Here we go. Three, two, one, mute. Okay. So, question number one. What's it doing? Question number one. Wow, Back to the Future was in pre-production. Universal Studios executive Sid Scheinberg sent a memo to producer Steven Spielberg saying that the title of the film would confuse audiences. And he suggested an alternative title that he really wanted. 
Which of these is it? The Amazing DeLorean, Spaceman from Pluto, Marty's Heavy Adventure, Time Trap, or Back to the 50s? Number two. Who is the composer of that iconic score that I just played? Other films he composed music for include Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump, Castaways, The Polar Express, Predator, Parent Trap, Stuart Little, Lilo and Stitch, The Night at the Museum Trilogy, Ready Player One, and several Marvel Cinematic Universe films, including the Avenger films. So he's a very well-known guy or lady. Number three. Marty McFly travels 30 years into the past to November 5, 1955, because Doc Brown had programmed that date into the DeLorean's time circuits while explaining how the control panel works. What was special about that particular date? Why did he put that into the computer? Number four. According to Doc Brown, this component of the DeLorean is, quote, what makes time travel possible? And another question about the DeLorean. Number five, to traverse time, the DeLorean time machine needs to reach 88 miles per hour and must have this much electrical power available for that special component to function, meaning the component in number four. Number six. Due to a causality loop, this recording artist gets his inspiration for a hit song by hearing Marty McFly perform it at Hill Valley's Enchantment Under the Sea Dance before he historically wrote and performed it. Number seven. The iconic role of Marty McFly originally went to this actor, who spent several weeks filming Back to the Future before Michael J. Fox was recast in the role. The midstream change caused a huge amount of reshoots and added $4 million to the film's cost. By all accounts, it was well worth it. Number eight, what does the California license plate of the DeLorean time machine read? Number nine, Biff Tannen is known for his confused and mixed metaphors. Which one is projected on the curtain at the end of Back to the Future the Musical to instruct the audience what to do next? And hopefully you didn't have to see the play to figure that out with the clues I put. Number 10. And lastly, Back to the Future is currently a trilogy. True or false, partly due to the success of the Broadway musical production on Back to the Future 4 has been greenlit. And that is it. Any questions? Okay. What are you asking in 10? If it's a trilogy or if, if the pot is being... No, the first part is, is, a, is a true statement. Back to the Future is currently a trilogy. And then the second part is the second part, true or false, with a okay. call. Cool. Actually, the first part is false if you count the cartoons as you canonical. Don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> nor the comic books, nor the books. Shoot the tri shoot, shoot the cartoons out of canon. Yeah, they're not canon. It's number eight. And, and unfortunately, ne neither is the the PlayStation probably on other platforms to a game which I played, which was pretty damn good. It could have been a four. It's number eight, a trick question because license plates can't read. Uh, <laughs> I thought is that Vincent who asked that question? I couldn't see who asked. We're all Canadians. It's uh, all the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was Ron. <laughs> <laughs> It was not me, but that was funny. I can. Uh oh, now I'm in trouble. No, I don't want to share my screen. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, uh, oh, wait, you can do. Oh, but you can't, Ben, can you? You didn't write the questions down. You're not doing the. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, I I have the questions, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Oh, you can do it then. Thanks. 
Uh, oh, I got to stop sharing. Uh, I can take over sharing. It's fine. No, you you got it. It's you. It's all you. <sighs> all right. Can you guys see it? Okay. I'm trying not to make things overlap. Um, you guys, yep. uh, if you want to call out answers, that's fine. I, I've already answered quite a few of them because I've watched this movie you many want... times. Oh, okay. Uh, Spaceman from Pluto, I'm pretty sure, was the title that was suggested because that's kind of what they poke fun at when um, that's, I think, the title of his dad's book because of his son going back and, and waking him up with the really loud headphones and wearing the hazmat suit. Uh, so that yeah. was poking fun at the alternate title that they suggested for it. Right. But I could be I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that was the reason for that. Um, number two, anyone know the composer? I'm sure I'll know it if I hear the name, but oh, uh, what the heck? Well, I can't remember. Because this I one did. was not John Williams. This one was, uh, but it's the heck did he do? This was not. Um, Oh, we can come back to that. Yeah. Okay, anyone know the answer to three on what the the reason for the special date? I think it was um, the town became... Uh, oh, no. Jeez, why, why was that? I can't remember. There was... It was too long ago since I watched the movie. Well, I mean, it, you know, they have the, the clock tower incident there, but I don't know if that was the reason or if there's an out of story reason that they made that the date in the story. That mm -hmm. that part, I don't know, but. Well, we can go back to it. Yeah, but maybe we can say, we'll just say the clock tower for now. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Four is the flux capacitor. Uh, is um, there something as a flux capacitor? Doesn't a, sound right. A, a, a made up thing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. a, yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's the flux capacitor. And yeah, then number five, cool. this much electrical power is one point twenty one gigawatts, because that's how he says it in the movie. Not gigawatts. He uh, says gigawatts. How do you remember that? I mean, it's I, a... I'm a you. You 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 ask me about Shakespeare, and I'm like, I I know nothing. But you ask me about movies, and I can, I can recite okay. the the lines of the movie in my head. Okay. So the I'm trying to remember who, because he calls his cousin. The guy that hears Marty play calls his cousin on the phone. He's like, you need to listen to this. Uh, uh, it was Marvin, if I recall correctly. He's like, Marvin, you got to hear this. Uh, so I don't know see. which Marvin. Marvin Gaye must be. Yeah, Marvin. that's kind of, yeah. Maybe. I think it's G-A-Y-E, but it may be yeah, another that's the guy. Marvin, I know, who's a big shot musician. Yep. Okay, uh, iconic role. Um, I always forget this actor's name, but it's the actor red hair who was in. He was in the mask. Ron Howard? No, Jim Carrey. No. Ron Howard? No, not the new mask. I'm talking about like the old movie. I think it's just called Mask. The one where the kid was had deformities. Oh, uh, Eric, somebody, Eric. Eric Stoltz. Eric, yeah. Thank you, Cindy. Do you just saying Eric totally made? Stoltz, made you remember the whole name. I think is yeah. how it's spelled. Yep. Thank you very much. I think the license plate is it's something like out of time. I just don't know if he's gonna get us on spelling. That's gonna be tough because out of time is uh like eight letters, and I don't know if you can put eight letters on a license plate. Granted, it's a movie, so maybe they just fudged it a little bit. I just don't know. 
but I, I think it's out of time. I just don't know if that's exactly how it's, because you know how a lot of times with license plates, they'll change the, they'll use numbers and stuff to make words. And yeah. Okay. Um, which one is projection? I, the, nine, I have no idea. metaphor is which one is projected on the curtain at the back but then he uh, says the musical to instruct the audience what to do next I don't know what he means by that um get up and leave yeah <laughs> or yeah didn't wasn't he but it says projected on the curtain because didn't so, I think he says one of the lines he says in the movie is the make like a tree and get out of here instead of make like a tree and leave, you know, because again, he always oh. messes up his metaphor. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's this, what it is. This took place in the musical, right? Not in the film. Correct. Right. But it, again, it's. I would think because if it was projected at the end of the musical, they're using a line from the, the movie, film, which yeah. he says something like, I think he says, make like a tree and get out of here. I'm pretty sure that's one of the lines. So okay. I would think that was something that you would project on the screen at the end of the musical that also, you know, is a nod to the movie. Yeah. I mean, is that sure. sound good to everybody? That sounds, that good. sounds wonderful. Uh, I think that's how he's like, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing it in like title <laughs> case, but that's okay. Whatever. All right. Um, ooh, true or false? This is tough. I could totally see because Hollywood's all about, oh, it's popular again. We want to make money off of it. I would think that that would be false. But this could easily be false. But I can tell you that I would not be shocked if it was true. Because you look at a movie like Tron Legacy, Tron Legacy came out many, many years after the original Tron, which the original Tron wasn't even that. It, it didn't make like a ton of movie at the box office. So I remember the original video game Tron. Yeah, Tron's I like both movies. I really wanted them to make a sequel to Tron Legacy, but it didn't do very well in the box office. Just kind of like the first one. Um when you say true or false, I have no idea. All I know is I, I loved Back to the Future and I watched the sequel. I hated the second film. I couldn't even get through to the end. I stopped after about half The second through. film is it only exists to set up the third film. That's really it. The third film is not bad. You may okay. want to you may want to get through the second film just so that you can because the second film leads directly. It's kind of like a cliffhanger leads directly into the third film. Okay. Um, but the third film's a lot better than the second one. That's the one where they're back in the old West I in see. the third film. Um, but yeah, the second one it's in the future. It's just not, it's not all that great. The first one is still the classic. Yeah. I don't know what, what's, if we took it to a vote, what's everyone say? I could go either way. I'm a little leaning towards true just cause you know, Hollywood loves to make money, but it could also be false. So is the Broadway musical successful? First of all, is that true? Yeah, that's one of the things he was talking about um, before we went to the breakout rooms is how how popular the, the musical is. Yeah, then I would say it's probably true. Yeah. If it's a big success. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with true. All right, we're going with true. Here's hoping. I mean, we got a 50-50 chance. What are you going to do, right? All right. Yeah. Didn't we skip one of our earlier questions? Okay, the clock tower thing. So the clock tower, the clock tower stopped because of the lightning strike on that day, right? Right. On, but was it that day when that happened to on the day that he came back? That's how it gave the power. Or was he there? No, he was there for a few days. It's probably yeah, something other than the clock tower. I just don't, I can't think of anything else to put there. So we should have some answer instead of a blank. But I'm wondering if there's something significant about the date, November 5th, 
It could be like the the director's birthday for all I know, you know, who knows. In other words, there may be a reason behind the scenes why they picked that date. The date doesn't have any meaning inside the movie. It's it's something a reason why they picked it, why the writer or director Oh, picked it. I think that was the year his uh his mother was born. His okay. mother. The director Marty McFly's mother. No, I, no, no, she was well, at, she was in school was, at the dance. Oh, yeah, was at right. the dance. maybe it's at the day his dad proposes to his mom. Well, but, but here's the thing: he... it's it was a it was a thing programmed in by Doc Brown, not by yeah. Marty. So it would be a date significant uh -huh. to Doc Brown, or it's a date that is arbitrary in the story, but it was picked in real life for a reason that was significant to either the director or the writer. I don't right. know. I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. I wish I could look it up. <laughs> it was, I'm Let's say it um, I'm going to say birth director's birthday if any unless somebody has a better idea. I know that's probably not sure. right, but Wait, 1984, that would make the director 29? I can't remember who's the director that was... Uh, it was in, at least in 1984, right? Uh, I think so. So that would be too young for a... Maybe, I don't know. Too well, we've got 25 seconds, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, because be. we still don't. Anybody have any thoughts on two? Otherwise, I'll I'll think about it and I might just come up with a direct, oh, with a with a composer. Yeah, just any well known composer. Clearly. I can't remember. I can't remember. I know that I was okay. told. But, oh well. Say which, so we would have been okay. Writing's in progress, so we are all back. Which, okay. which, 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 watch. So, so by the way, this is the shirt I was wearing today. Yeah. Oh, cool. And, and it's also, uh, well, it's not going to show it because it's coming past my face. The bottom says, I want to believe. So oh, it's kind of like the, the typical UFO flying one, but it's got the DeLorean. So and, and I'm wearing that the, the Psycon. You should have, you should have a little kid from ET following behind. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. So answers mm -hmm. all right so uh number one i'll put the, i'll put the answers in the chat afterwards so i i listened to two teams and neither got this correct um uh the the studio head sid scheinberg uh was an absolute idiot because he wanted a spaceman from pluto yeah yes <laughs> yeah yeah and interestingly uh george I, mcfly's I first first novel in the alternative timeline is close to that it's a match made in space so uh they kind of went with that yay right. so the uh, famous composer is alan silvestri good good job bill um i heard one team at least get this question wrong about why was november 5th 1955 plugged in uh, Doc Brown was telling Marty about uh, how he uh, hit, fell off the toilet, hit his head, and that led to a vision of the component that makes time travel possible. That was the date. Oh, Not the date of the it. lightning strike. Marty was in town for several days. Yeah, several days. Yeah. So some That's people put down, oh, it was I couldn't the remember. Dang strike. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that just happened, luckily, Sorry, for Marty. The lightning strike was refuted that same week later. So mm -hmm. number four. According to Doc Brown, this component of the Lorian quote is what makes time travel possible, and that's what he had the vision of. It is the flux capacitor. Number five. To traverse time, what's necessary besides 88 miles per hour? How much electrical energy is needed? It is 1.21 gigawatts. Yes. <laughs> Good job pronouncing it correctly. Gigawatts is an answer. Thank you. Ben I was amazed that Ben would pick out this number from out of nowhere. Just a random number. Like no one's yeah. ever heard that before. So so I'll tell you what I told the team I was I was there. Uh, I'm about to interview Bill Nye and I read his Wikipedia page and I knew the story generally of how he got his name. 
he he corrected somebody. He was a guest. He wasn't a famous person yet. He was a guest on someone's TV show, and he corrected somebody when they said something, and Bill Nye said, "No, you're pronouncing that wrong," and it was that word. That's what the he Wikipedia said article said. Hey, said Jamie, it. mute yourself. I got it. Yes. So apparently, the uh, the scientist on the show actually said it like Doc Brown said it, and Bill Nye corrected it. <laughs> no, it's nice. Good uh, what are you, Bill Nye the science guy? And it's stuck. <laughs> I've been accused of being Bill Nye and the science guy. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. So, uh, number six. Um, what what recording artist was it uh, that uh, the the people on stage were, one of them was related to? And he said, hey, uh, hey Chuck, uh, this is your cousin, ah. uh, Marvin. Yay, it's Chuck Berry. That's who wrote right. Johnny Be Good, because that's oh. what uh, Marty was playing. Uh, the iconic role of Marty McFly. Uh, they originally, I heard um, Carl talking about this, and he's right. They originally wanted it to go to Fox, but he was otherwise occupied and put their second choice in, who did such a uh, bad job with comedy that they spent a lot of money and a lot of time to redo all the shots with him, and that was Eric Stoltz. A very good dramatic actor. Yeah, I, I think the problem was he didn't think it was a comedy when he read the script. So he came, that, he was I acting it as if I it never was read that anywhere, comedy. and that's hard to believe. But yeah, okay. that's crazy. All right. So, what does the California license plate of the DeLorean time machine read? And for this, I'm going to show you a video I made because I went to a show where. So I shouldn't need to pause, right? It's your own video. No, it's my own video. Okay. Share my screen. Did you make a, a special license plate for yourself? Then? So, no. So this was a show of Huey Lewis and the News and parked outside of the theater. Was the DeLorean. Was the DeLorean. Here you go. Mm. Cool. Mm. Including Save the Clock Tower flyer inside and the hoverboard. Mm. Nice. And uh, the, the, the boots. The time circuit set to the day it was, interestingly, there. And now we're about to see the back. And there you go. Out of time. Yes. Uh, that's... Anybody get it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Right? Out at time. time? Out of time. Out of time. Out of time. Yeah, that's I've always joked that the DeLorean time. was such a crappy car. The reason why it's 88 miles an hour is because that's as fast as the DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's probably true. All uh, right. So Biff Tannen is known for his confused mixed metaphors, which one was projected. It was, at, as they said, at the end of the show. And it was the one where he said, now make like a tree and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we were close. Oh, oh we didn't. Oh, yeah. that was Carl, make like did, a banana did you get that one or no? Uh, we had make like a tree I wasn't sure I was right. But that's what I thought it was. All right. Oh, nice. Go. That's, I I got it too. Ben was a uh, maven. He knew all this mm -hmm. stuff. Very good. All right, and the last one, Back to the Future, is a part four in in the works. Uh, the creative team, Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale, have vowed that there will never ever be a oh. Back to the Future. Oh. 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 It's a oh. False. False. Even even if they get buckets and buckets of money, they won't. <laughs> That's what they say. Because you know Hollywood, they're all like, "Oh wait, we can make more money. All right, let's well, let's How about another it. dump yeah. truck full of hundred dollar bills? Well, if they so, start so, making another one, can we get our point back? No, because it says is currently in the works, right? Yeah, we have to go back in time then. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the way the way I phrased the question, you know, was that it has been greenlit, and that jet is yes. not true. So, um, our team wants to go back in time <laughs> yeah, and change your answers. Is that what you want to do? Um, no, no take backs. He's sorry. You, you might you. destroy the space time continuum. If Shakespeare yeah. had written oh, these, we would have been agreeing. You got to decide just, if it's worth it. I just posted a link to a very hilarious stand-up routine of John Mulaney doing a pitch. For Back to the Future. That, that yeah. that's how they came up with this the screen pitch idea. Yes, that that is hysterical. I I do recommend watching that. We'll we'll add that in there. Okay. Yeah, right. a high school kid and his best friend is a disgraced <laughs> nuclear scientist. And and no and one ever explains why. Forty or eighty. Nobody. No knows. one ever explains why. 
We just test. thought that was okay. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen and get some scores. And there weren't special things for kids the way they are now. Like, we would just go see movies, any movie, like Back to the Future. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm going to change my uh, name. Mm -hmm. Karen from Five Hours in the Future. Oh, I like it. There you go. Okay, so uh, Team 5, 22 years, new high scorer. Be proud, boy. An 8 only. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. that was excellent. Which ones did you get wrong? Uh, uh, one, 1 and, and 9. Yep. Okay. Uh, we always knew that Navarro is contemptible. Five. We are not right. <laughs> okay. Canada is still burning, which was Monty, me. Monty, I think we got a Monty. six. Yeah, I I should have done better than oh, I did, but there was something dang. I messed up on. I'm sorry. I. I will ha hang my head in shame. Okay. You're playing Susan because it was a time travel movie, so you're pretending <laughs> yeah, you didn't know any answers. Yes, exactly. A burning Man, another name for a UTI. A whopping two. <gasps> oh, my God. <sighs> Woo. Ron. Which two did you get? Flex Capacitor and Chuck Berry. Oh, nice. And we came close on the Biff Tannen one out of just yeah. taking out of our butts, but we came what, close. What would you write? We had, uh, what was it, uh, Make like, like a, a tree, tree and scram. And scram. Oh, oh yeah. damn close. Is Danny Masterson a fan of good grammar and complete sentences? Ten. Nice. Oh, oh I knew it. Oh, <laughs> my ten. God. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God. All right. Let Rick me time. get photo rid time. of my chat. Let me take a photo. Okay. Everyone be... On your best behavior for photo time. Oh, Hi, Susan. Here. All right. Three, two, one. Cheese. 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 Say cheese, Katniss. Gouda. All right. Let me make sure. <laughs> That's the type of cheese. So I, I got to walk the dog. So I'm next. So you can't start without me. Oh, I'm starting yeah. without you. See you all, no. see you all, right. all next week. All right. Well, bye, bye, Karen. Thanks for joining. Karen, bye. Bye, bye. Karen. I gotta go to All right. So, uh -oh. everyone ready, ready for their five minute four. break? Go back bye. Time to round three. Or maybe a 10 minute break since Peggy's walking the dog. Okay. 10 minute break. I always think, I always think five is too short minutes. anyway. Like, everybody needs a break to get stuff. So, yeah, 10 mostly, minutes starting. Mostly, mostly right Susan, now. Susan, if you're listening, mostly she doesn't uh, go by it and it goes long. But every once in a while, she makes it like three minutes and I come back and everyone's talking. Ah. Uh. Wait, somebody uh, needs to buy her a stopwatch. Yeah, there you go. Be uh, be ready. Uh, Adrian might come on. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, unless she's at PsyCon as well. Oh, wait, no, she is. Yeah, no, she, she won't be on. Well, if she's at PsyCon, I'm really missing something. Nobody's at PsyCon. I miss my plane. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, she's at somewhere with Susan somewhere. I forgot. Uh, I think last week she said she was going somewhere. So. And I decided I was going to get my uh, surgery done. So. Okay. They had, yeah, they had so... I've had so many... Um, problems and getting infection and getting uh sepsis so they said well better get it removed otherwise you might get sepsis again okay so i okay so i missed the i missed the photo nature called a little too urgently <laughs> oh sorry uh, jim well, yeah yeah uh, yeah that's okay yeah so uh I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll just say goodbye until no I guess two weeks from now next week is the uh, book club. <laughs> okay. Right. Good night, Jim. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Leave. Leave. Oh.
Now it's quiet. So, Carl, I'm curious, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the chicken cross the road? Colonel Sanders was on her side. Ah. I have an adult uh, joke to that. Mm -hmm. Are there any kids in here? None here. Ah, why Don't did the like uh, why did the pervert cross the road? The staple to the chicken. Stuck, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Stuck to the back of the chicken. <laughs> Here's a joke that uh, women sometimes like. What do you uh, call a cucumber crossed with Mexican jumping beans? An organic vibrator. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have one. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? To get to the idiot's house. To get to the idiot's house. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's knock, there? knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. The chicken who? See, I walked into that one. Yeah, you, 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 you at the chicken. You're at the chicken's house. <laughs> yeah. Chicken's destination. You're the you're the idiot with the house. Knock knock. Who's the chicken? Uh, the, your house. Yeah. At my house, I have no chickens. I am the chicken. Nobody here but us chickens. If Bill had his lighting a little bit different, it would uh, seem like he was actually visiting his background there. Yeah. Okay, I sent uh, Susan the picture. Oh, are you in contact with Susan then? Uh, I just sent it to her over Facebook Messenger. Oh, okay. Because that's how we were communicating prior to me running trivia for the night. Right. I guess I should run and take a break real quick before the 10 minute timer is up. I shall return. All right. So Lee, how are the llamas doing for you these days? Everybody's fine. Just uh, nothing real exciting. Just went up to the feed store and turns out that they're going to have some big customer event next month, so they want me to bring a couple llamas. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't know if they'll give me a price break on some of the stuff I buy. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. 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 Mm. So a friend of mine once said, you want to make a small fortune in llamas, start out with a large fortune. Ah, uh, yeah. But, you know, so I've got friends that go drop a couple of hundred dollars every weekend to go play golf, and so we all have our hobbies. Yes, yeah. I think llamas are a better hobby, I guess. I would agree. Computer. Yeah. There's Carolyn. How are you today? I am good, thank you. Oh, that's good. You live in the eastern United States, do you not? I do not. Oh, okay. No. I, no. I live I lived in upstate New York for 22 years and I moved back to California um four years ago, four and a half years ago. Oh, okay. So you're same time zone then. So it's 
a little after eight for you. Yes. You in Lodi? I live in Lodi. Lodi. Oh, yeah. Stuck in Lodi again. I was born here, <clears throat> and then I moved to Southern California, and then I moved to upstate New York when I met my husband. And then as soon as he retired, I said, I never want to see snow again, and so we moved back. <laughs> so... <laughs> Carol and I actually got to meet face to face yesterday in yes. Lodi. Oh, yeah. fun! In Lodi, yeah. in little lovable Lodi, so it was fun and cool. Yep, and when we do the announcements, I may actually announce that because uh, we had our first we had our first group meeting. Oh, you cool. you don't like the snow, but I pray for the snow whenever it comes here. So be, just because of where I live, it's so dry. Mm. So I'm like, please rain, please mm. snow, please do something to get rid of the the fires. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also we have the highest rates of um kidney stones in alberta are you That's claiming cool. it's from the dryness <laughs> yeah it's because of the dryness yeah we have the highest instance of um kidney uh, stone so uh, of all, all of all the things i've ever read online that was not one of them vincent no <laughs> exposure to your skin <laughs> you gotta to add it to the list uh, yeah though some sounded that strange I did hear calcium though, and I had a neighbor who yeah, went to the hospital. Though. I don't know how many times, and he would not give up his ice cream. It's just I'm going, but okay. <laughs> you know, one bowl of ice cream well, equals one stone, huh? You can you can have calcium, but then you have to have something else in order to balance that out. Yeah, he was just down in the ice cream. So I said, if your doctor said don't do that, maybe not, but okay. Yeah. Like I have you're, to take Oh go ahead. I was saying if you're if you're in Lodi, you're safely away from the snow, but you can see it. Yes, yeah. I can yeah. see it. Yeah. It symbolizes snow. It stays up in the mountains where it belongs and you can go visit it. Yes. It has yeah. snow if you so desire. It has snowed a few times in Lodi, and one of the times was when my mom was pregnant with me, and it snowed, snowed, like it stuck snowed, like, which is unbelievable. So we, they have pictures, it was, um, you know, of the neighborhood at the time, and it was covered in snow, and then when I was in kindergarten or first grade, all of a sudden the teachers like opened the door to let us out because it was snowing, and we were all just frolicking. Um, and I guess it snowed another time, but I was not living here at the time. So, That's it was, a good yeah. So I keep Kevin. hoping. I keep hoping. Uh, One more time it. before I leave this earth, I want it to snow in Lodi. So. <laughs> it snows very occasionally at Humboldt State. There's one day, however, that I was in the middle of a calculus class, and one of the other guys in the class looked out the window and saw these great big white flakes coming down. He speaks up and says, it's snowing. And another student says, yeah, it's snowing outside too. <laughs> I started telling everyone about the benefits of eating dried grapes. It's all about raising awareness. Oh, dear. All right. Okay. How many more drawings? That's what's, that's what's on Kevin's uh, thing there. Raising awareness. All right. Let's see. It looks like Peggy's not back yet, but we can uh, do announcements. Anyone have any announcements? Well, um, I got one for you. An interesting one, actually, this week on Data Skeptic. I talked to a political science type person who uh, was interested in how well do people versus chat GPT do on certain tasks. So they got a bunch of political tweets from different politicians where, you know, their party. And then they asked people like, you know, strip out the name. Do you think this tweet came from a Republican 
or from a Democrat. And uh, as it stands, ChatGPT outperformed PhD students in political science. So the machines have really beaten us at the game of determining what your politics are from your tweets. Wow. Uh, I know you've covered uh, AI a lot on your podcast. Have you talked about the, I just heard about this today, the thing, Ch China spending you know, equivalent to tens of billions of dollars as a national budget to inject AI into everything? So I know about that. It's a smart move, but I, I don't have any like deep insight about it. It's freaking frightening. I mean, they have like the equivalent of like our social media apps, but they're different. They have so, they have like influencers and they have replicated themselves so they can do like it's like the, the movie Multiplicity with Michael Keaton, <laughs> except they're on the computer. Like there's multiple ones of them and they act exactly like them and they could do things simultaneously. So you can get like, you know, 80 hours of work in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is freaking frightening. And if we're not doing anything like that, we are going to be screwed. Yeah, maybe we'll fall behind. Who knows? Hmm. Further behind. Yeah. So my small little announcement, um, I was very excited. Last night, um, my local group, the Stockton Area Atheists and Other Freethinkers, we had our first rational roundtable, which is uh, designed for skeptics to get together and kind of pool our resources and ideas to promote critical thinking in our communities. And I'm happy to say that Lee came up or came down to Lodi um, and joined us. And he was very helpful because he contributed a lot to the discussion. And I was really happy for that. So oh, very good. Awesome. Yay. That's good news. Very nice. Anybody else have anything to talk about? Before I, had an we article start round three? I had one of my articles published today. Uh, it's my oh. latest anticipating Psycon to whet people's appetites. Ben, who aren't planning on going, interview with Lee and Lord, and it was extremely fun because we talked about Star Trek at least ten percent of the time. <gasps> nice. Hey, if you want to pay my way, uh, Rob, I'll. Uh, so, I, Susan, I, I, Susan keeps talking about the scholarship. Uh, there you go. Be a Wikipedia editor. That the, the plan was to attend until I got hit with a ginormous tax bill. And I had to fix my car this year. So, so here stupid is, expenses. Here right. is here is the screenshot uh, that I just had to use of her uh, wearing her the Starfleet Delta on her neck and giving me a Vulcan salute. And she's doing the Vulcan salute cor salute yeah. correctly. You don't know how many times. <laughs> I just want to tell people Wait, what's, stop how do you sticking do the thumb together. People oh, really? do it like this a lot. Really? No, yeah, that's a lot it. of people do it like this, and that is incorrect. The thumb is always out. So you want to hear something sad? My first Star Trek convention when I was like 17 years old, I had to I had to manually teach my hands to do this because they don't. And some people's naturally can split it that way. Something. Yeah, no. I I put rubber bands around the two fingers yeah. and for three weeks <laughs> I can do until I could do it, yes. and I can only do yeah. it with the hand I practiced it with. I can. No, do I can it do it in either it. now. So many years of doing it, but then you also get to the point I, where I you can, can do, do the, right the, the the opposite. You can do the other one. No, I cannot. I cannot do that. Nope. I can't do it left hand. I can't do that. You're the only one who went to the orthodontist to get the tire Star Trek thing right. <laughs> I remember in middle school we all practiced doing the bewitched twitch. <laughs> Ooh, the nose. I cannot do yeah. that. Yeah. Well, we well, did it with our lips mostly. Actually, yeah. neither could Elizabeth. Uh... What? Okay. <laughs> no, she, she moved her lips. She didn't move her nose. No, I. We did our lips too. <laughs> But um, but does she have a stunt double for that? <laughs> no, no, it's just no. Everybody. Oh, Robin's here. Let's the genie head right nods. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. I <laughs> head nod and blink. I need a big pop up that tells me in big big letters that someone yeah. has joined. Yeah, it, it comes and goes so fast. You can yeah, I'm like sorry, Robin. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Uh, Hello, Robin. So, by the way, I, I want to share this thing about the, the Back to the Future thing. Uh, stop the recording, please. And if you don't want to, spoiler, if you're ever going to go see this musical. All right. Recording in progress. Peggy, are you ready? Yes, Everybody thanks. good? Back from Everyone the did their, gave their announcements? More importantly, is George ready? Yeah, that's the question. He's He's been out and he did his businesses and now he's just barking at miscellaneous things. Oh, no, he should do that. 
That's his job, right? That's his job. That's He's his, a dog. That's his job. He's doing exactly oh. what he's supposed to do. So tonight's category is a mishmash, a hodgepodge of who did what in the arts. And I will give you some questions about accomplishments in the artistic field. And you just need to say who did it. All right. Three, two, so, one, mute. Okay, there I am. I got to do that. I can't do that. How dare I be muted? I'm the host. I shouldn't be muted. Oh, you I got to fulfill. I got to fulfill Susan's role of of not being muted and talking during question giving. Sorry, I'm getting there. Where's my chat function? What, oh, it's over here. What's, it's what's Mark? What's Mark doing? Is he hanging out with the cats? I am. Um, ben. No, Mark. Mark is. Uh, he's gone too. I'm. I'm yeah, here in there. the house all by myself oh. with the cats. With the cats, I'm going to put two questions in at a time since it took me so long to get to them. So, question one is: Who designed the Walt Disney concert in Los Angeles? Question two: Who wrote The Handmaid's Tale, by which I'm referring to the book, not a tele. Oh God. Not the TV show. No, we'll get another two. two. Three and four are... Number three, who directed the 1946 film It's a Wonderful Life? Number four, who choreographed and co-directed the 1950s version of West Side Story? both on Broadway and in the film. And five and six, number five, who wrote the classic novel Remembrance of Things Past in French? I typed it out. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. Something like a la recherche du temps perdu. And number six, who composed the 1812 Overture, also known as the year 1812 Solemn Overture? Well, that wasn't a question, that was just George. Number seven, who wrote the song White Christmas? Number eight, what singer duetted with Tony Bennett for the song Body and Soul in 2011? Number nine, what American artist painted Arrangement in Gray and Black Number One in 1871, which is currently owned by the Musée d'Orsay in Paris? Number 10, who designed the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, DC? All right, do I have powers? I yes, I gave you powers. You, I do have powers, look, there they are. Any questions before I open all those rooms? Spock has a question. His hand is up. Uh, is there a theme to it? It's just hodgepodge. Just arts. hodgepodge. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. There's no theme. Sorry. Okay. Here you well, go. All right. Somebody has to change me. I need to be in room two. Okay. What room are you in? Five, it said. Okay. All right, let me do that. Rob, you need to be room two. Okay. And I need to assign Rob into a room. Where do we stand? Uh, we'll put you... Oh, I guess I should have. Wait, hold on. 
don't don't join yet, Robin. I should probably check to see the scores and to see where you should be moved to. Oh, we got two that are tied. So let's move you to. Don't think I'm going to be helpful to the team that you put oh, me on. Oh, that's okay. Put you room three. And I need to join. Okay. I think. You guys are doing better than I would be doing. Yeah. So Bob Fossey makes sense. Okay. But but Bob Fossey, but he usually does such extravagant. Who are the other choreographers? Who else could I, I'm trying to think of who else it could have been. I mean, if they said who wrote the thing, I would have known. But uh, who did write about that? That was Leonard Bernstein wrote the the score for it. Yeah, Bob Fossey. But usually, he did Chicago, does more extravagant. But he, maybe he did West Side Story. That would have been one of his early ones. Either the only other person I could think of. Um, Twyla Tharp, and I didn't think she did this. Mm. Okay. Anyway, so five. Remember, it's that's Marcel Proust. Okay. Oh, excellent. Very good. Six is, and I'm going to have fun trying to spell his name. Tchaikovsky. I'll go with that spelling. Yeah. My Christmas was. Um, Bing Crosby? No, Bing he's Crosby. saying it. No, he sang oh, it. Yeah. Irving Berlin wrote it. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, good oh, call. I was going to say, I know he sang it, but I don't think he wrote it. So, no. yeah, Irving Berlin. That makes nice. sense. Good Jewish guy writing White Christmas. Oh. So. Number yeah. eight is Lady Gaga. Yep. That's what I thought, too, yeah. Yep, I had that written down as well. Well, I've been to the Dorsey more than once, but I don't think I noticed that one. That's that's the second name for it. It's um, oh god, what's his name that did this one? And I've managed to not get there both times I've been to Paris. Um, oh god, the Dorsey is the best. You should. I know we, totally. we really really wanted to get there, just didn't have time last time. Hmm. But who's an American famous from the late nineteenth century? Um, Norman Rockwell. Um, not see, not not in eighteen seventy one. He wasn't born yet. Oh yeah. Um. um I didn't know that many American artists. I was thinking of Grandma Moses. American artist. She was American an American artist. artist, and it's an arrangement in gray and black, number one. Oh, you think the picture, that's the one with, um, oh, what's that, um, the, the picture with the two farmers? That's no, yeah, that's talking American no, Gothic, no, no. That's American Gothic. American Gothic. Which is, no. That's not that. Nope. Let's see. But who are some of famous American artists? Um, well, from that who were time, alive in 1871, <laughs> which is why I keep coming back to Grandma Moses. Um, there's another name that just keeps escaping me now. Uh, there's, there's the Turner. Yeah, Turner. That was, Tur Turner was all landscapes. And I don't think this yeah. is a landscape. I think it might be somebody sitting in a chair or something. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm remembering. And I, yeah. I'm going to put down Grandma Moses until I hear otherwise. But hey, okay. that's better than a blank. Who designed the Via That's my that's my Oh, excellent! Oh, all right. Look at that. You might get it. We might get an eight or a nine. Yeah, that's her face, Peggy. <laughs> um, 
I can even picture the arrangement in gray and black, but I think I can too. Um, there weren't that many American artists back then. No, I mean, a lot of them were out west. There was uh, the, the guy who did all the western paintings, but I can't remember his name now. But it wouldn't have been him. Well, we're done except for overthinking two of the answers. Yeah, I'm going to close them now so you don't go any further. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That doesn't mean they're right. Just I know how painful it is. Yeah, it's probably true. Yeah, when you, especially when you change it to the wrong answer after you had the right answer. Yeah, we did that last time there where we, we said it's one of the witches. Nope, it's Macbeth because we think that it's Macbeth, Macbeth. Yeah, thanks to Mono, overthinking for us. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, this should make up for the two we got on the last one. I have to say, I've been through the Dorsey. I've spent, I don't know, a, a good 10 hours in the Dorsey, and I don't remember any American artist in there. Oh, there's that too, yeah. <laughs> that was fast. I, I wanted it to be fast, but you guys did really well. Did you? I, I'm assuming everybody had enough time to do 10 answers. You assume wrong. Barely. <laughs> do you want more time? We were in the middle of the uh, doing one answer when we got yanked back. So at least at least a minute. Okay. Go have fun. I don't I don't think we need to go back. I don't, I don't think we have we need to go back. Mm -mm. So while I'm not going back, let me finish what I was saying when we pulled out, which is if you're coming for Psycon. And you can stay some extra time other than go to the go to the expo meeting. There are things in Las Vegas that are really worth seeing that require leaving the strip and that are uniquely Las Vegas. For example, um, there is the one of only two Smithsonian museums outside of Washington, DC. And it's the oh. Atomic Energy Museum because they used to do atomic testing here. It's a rather yes. scary place to go, but it's really interesting and you can I see think john john i think would really like to go there we went to albuquerque to the museum of nuclear science and history history and science in albuquerque mm -hmm. i think he'd, he'd like it actually it's... his project that he was working on when he retired was speech had a little exhibit there and another one that's really worth going to because you can't go to it anywhere else is the Neon Museum. Yeah. They are restoring neon signs and oh. they have like they have the old signs that aren't there and they give you a walking tour through it. And I haven't been there since COVID, but pre-COVID, they did not have this exhibit. It was a big add-on. There's a theater now where they do some things with the signs. And they have some signs that they have actually restored. And my sister is a museum person, um, and she works with Egyptology. So she go, she's in a museum in New York City, the, the museum where they have the, the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, but they have all the Egypt stuff. And she had mm -hmm. a wonderful conversation with a the person there. And it was absolutely amazing as she's talking about things that are 5,000 years old. And the person there is talking about things that are 50 years old and 30 years old, but the same issues are going on. Yeah. So, well, do we restore the 5,000 year old things the way it actually looked then, or to keep it as natural as it was and not add modern things? And they were saying the same thing about the exhibits. Do we put in the new globes that aren't the original to, to replace the other ones that are better? Or do we use the original ones because it's more authentic? 
very interesting conversation. We have the same kind of conversation at the, at the railroad museum, restoring the old uh, rolling stock. By the way, Gail, have you ever seen Mars Attacks? Yes. I love that movie. Takes <laughs> place <laughs> <in Texas>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gail, they had the same questions about when they were restoring Da Vinci's Last Supper. Should they restore it to what they believe the brightness of the colors were when they originally painted it, or mm. the dim faded colors that people are used to seeing? Yeah, right, I think exactly. I saw an article about that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the Roman and Greek statues like were actually painted colors too, and they never yeah. put the paint back on. It's just we always think of them as white marble. Yeah. Right. And are we ready for answers? Uh, yeah, please. I suppose. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Yes, please. It's a okay, great conversation. Okay, in the arts. Number one is Frank Gehry. Uh, Are we good if we just got Gary? Yeah, I'll take Gary. Thank you spelled it right. Yep, we what did. did he have Gary, yeah, Indiana? That does not count. Says, if you're in Las Vegas, we have a, a Gary building here. And it yeah. is very reminiscent of what you're seeing on this picture. Uh, what if we had this Gary stuff Burkhoff? is magnificent. <laughs> Number two is Margaret Atwood. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. See, that looks like my book. I was going to say that is exactly the book that I had, and I found that picture on the internet, yeah, but that's the I, one I had. Does it, does I have it, that one. Doesn't yeah. look at all like my book because I I listened on audio. <laughs> Mine's in like pristine that. condition. Number three is Frank Capra. Oh, yeah. I should have known that one. That one I've Number four is Jerome oh, Robbins. That's right. Shoot. Oh, and that's Jerome, Jerome on the right there Mono. in the no, black and white see, photo. Number five is Marcel Proust. Wow. Is that book the like the really long one in seven volumes? Yeah, it's like yep. a million. That's, that's the one Monty Python did a skit on, contested yeah. to summarize the Proust story in 15 seconds or less. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have not read it. I have a copy of the first volume <laughs> somewhere. Tchaikovsky is number six. That's Tchaikovsky in the black and white photo and Napoleon in the color photo. Irving Berlin, yep. number seven. You guys did very good in this category. I was impressed. Number eight, though, is Amy oh. Winehouse. For those of you who went with Gaga, Amy got it first. That was like the last right. recording, wasn't it? It was. She died like within weeks of that recording. Uh. Number nine is Whistler. Whistler. Yeah, Whistler. Oh. And Whistler's mother. Whistler's mother, that's it. Will, will you take yeah. just Whistler? Yeah. <sighs> it's it's interesting that that painting is actually a, a study in blue, black and grays, and that's why he painted it. And he just lost his mm -hmm. first model, so he painted his mother. I said the comment I made in there was, I think it was something sitting in a chair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard yeah. that. And went, yeah. How could you say that and not get his mother? Yeah. Uh, and ten, a lot of you knew this. Uh, oh. Not everybody. Maya Lynn and... Um, she was, it's, there was one comment that she was a little girl. She was actually mm. an architectural student. So mm. she was at least of uh, college level and she entered in the <sighs> national contest and she won the contest. Was she, yeah, I confused it with a child. Is petite. She's a college student. I confused it with a child. But she is petite. She's petite. She's little, but she's not a little girl. I, yeah, I regard college students because... as little boys and little girls myself. So, yeah. It's been long enough ago, yeah. <sighs> that was fun. All right. Are we ready for scores? Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen. <sighs> All right, everyone can see the scores? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yes. let's start with, we always knew that Navarro is contemptible. We had nine. Okay. Oh, wow, good job. Wow. All right, and then next up is uh, Burning Man, another name for UTI. Seven. Okay. And then Tide. 
Uh, 22 years, new high score. Be proud, boy. Six. <laughs> okay, and then let's go to Canada is still burning. Seven. Seven. All right. Oh, we have a three-way tie, people. <laughs> Until they give their score. Is Danny Masterson yeah, a fan of good grammar? Zero. Nine. Nine. Zero. Nine. Zero. Uh, Zero. All right. Ah. Uh. Carl, was it Gaga that got you? No, it was um number four, the choreographer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Tony Robbins, Robbins yeah. Tony Robbins. <laughs> wrong, wrong Robbins. <laughs> wrong Robbins. It's a different musical. <laughs> Good job, team. Thank you for the answers in chat, Peggy. <clears throat> All right. Are we ready for round four? Believe so. Okay. So, does anybody know what character that is? Uh -huh. Oh, the character. Yeah, I know who he is. But what character is portrayed there? Character. Good to um, be the king, though, right? That is Count de Monet. Yes. Mm. Or Count, Count de Monet. Money. Good. In, in so. Count de Money, right. So the category is U.S. Coins and Currency. Oh, ah. Fantastic. All right. So this is probably a little tough, and so you may not... Uh, like you have know that many, but hopefully you will enjoy it anyway and maybe learn something. And if you do know it, all the better. Uh, so I'm going to post There's a lot of text here, but there's just some clarifications I want to provide. For the purpose of this trivia around U.S. coin, we'll refer to a coin struck by the United States Mint under the authority of the United States government since 1792 with a legally defined U.S. monetary value. That includes coins intended for circulation as money, as well as special uncirculated proof, commemorative, and other coins intended for collectors, and precious, precious metal bullion coins for investment. It does not include medals and medallions made by the mint with no legally defined monetary value. That's a lot of wordy stuff, basically saying any coin, as long as it has a face value, made by the U.S. Mint since 1792. Number two. Questions and answers are not limited to currently produced coins or currency. It may include any coin or piece of currency issued by the U.S. government since the passage of the Coinage Act of 1792. And finally, no question or answer in this round will refer to a prototype, pattern, or experimental coin that were not released or sold to the public. So, with all that out of the way, I will go on and mute you all. And I am not muted still. And I will post question number one. What is the lowest face value of any US coin? Past or present? Pretty much implied by any question I asked. Number two, what is the highest face value of any US coin? Number three, what is the highest face value of any U.S. coin minted for circulation rather than a coin made as a collector, commemorative, or bullion coin? Number four. What is the lowest face value for a piece of official U.S. issue currency? Number five. Though not all official U.S. units of money specified in the Coinage Act of 1792 were used in coins, 10 mils make a cent, 10 cents make a dime, 10 dimes make a dollar. What do $10 make? Number six. What was the first U.S. coin to contain nickel? as an intentional component of the coin's alloy rather than some trace contaminant. And just the coin, basic coin name, the year design is not needed. So if the answer was the 17 or 1492 llama head shilling, shilling would be a sufficient answer. 
But if anybody has a 1492 llama head shilling, I would love to see it. Number seven. What percent nickel by weight is the US five cent piece? There is a range, but I will not disclose the range for, I don't want to give away the approximate order of magnitude or anything like that, but there is a range. You don't have to have it exactly on. Number eight. What was the last year the Susan B. Anthony dollar was minted within an undisclosed range? Number nine. What currently produced U.S. circulation coin has the highest melt value relative to face value? In other words, if you got $100 face value worth of this coin from the bank and then sold all that for the value of the metals contained therein, which circulation coin would give you the best return on investment? And lastly, number 10. What was the last year the United States minted coins for circulation containing silver within an undisclosed range of dates? I like this undisclosed range. This is going to be a new thing. Breakout. Open breakout. Yeah, it's always like you often like give it away pretty close by giving up like plus or minus six years. Well. Uh, so let's go to this map. Well, yeah. All right. Who knows their coins? Because ah, these are some tough questions. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I can share my screen if you guys need the questions. That'd be great. Come. Thanks. Okay. Well, so for number one, I don't know. I mean, I would just say a penny. So there's clearly some something I don't know. I'm guessing, I think at one time there was like a half penny. Yeah. In I know there's a half penny in English. Like a half pence? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just taking a wild ass guess at it. Like, you know, like, yeah, in early times. Do we just yeah. want to say half penny or do we want to say? You know, half cent. Half cent. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And I don't know about the highest value. Um, <laughs> and do you think, is there like a dollar or two dollar? Well, or He's talking about throughout history. So I know right. we have a twenty dollar gold piece. Oh. But when he said the highest value of any US coin. Do we have anything higher than twenty? Isn't there like a Somewhere, there's like is there a, a, there's is like there a hundred dollar coin. Well, I thought there was like a pretend coin. Remember, he talks about one and one in circulation, and the other one was the highest value of any U.S. coin. God, I'm thinking there's like something goofy that banks used to use to. Oh, uh, okay. As long as it was in circulation of some kind. But it was so circulation. Yeah, he said it doesn't have to be in circulation, I think. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the difference between number two and number three. Right. Number three, I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe a $20 gold piece. Number okay. two, I don't know, you know, there, I think there was something crazy, like a million dollar coin, but it was oh. only used between banks. But I don't, God. 
I'm, you know, I'm just taking wild ass guesses at that. Something, yeah. I would think that, again, I could be wrong. My worry is it too high because that's an easy thing to steal and then you have something worth a million. Yeah, except that it's not, there's only like one. So there's no relationship between the value of a coin and the content of well, the Okay, well, that's metal. getting back out like is question number nine, what is the highest metallic? Right. Metal? I think yeah. that's a simply because there was so much copper in a penny that at one point people were actually melting down pennies and right. down for the copper. I, that yeah. sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. So what do you want to say the highest face value of any U.S. coin? No prototype pattern or experimental coins that were not released or sold to the public. Okay, let me go back on the instructions. These coins change for circulation as money. Coins from coin trees. Which is made of bullion coins from investment. Okay. Um, because the three implies that the answer to two was something that was for a collector commemorative or bullion coin. So, um, so I don't know if the what you were thinking about for the bank well, thing would hold true. Or, I do. I have no idea. I say a thousand dollars. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a wild guess. Yeah, that, that works. Okay. What is the lowest face value for a piece of official U.S. issue currency? So now, now he's talking about currency, and that makes me think of yeah, bills. Yeah, because the category is coins and currency. So. Okay. So here I would have said one dollar, but clearly there's something We've, right had something in the past. We're going back to 1795, so. I don't know when did they begin with paper currency. Uh, well, federal paper currency, I think, really didn't occur until right around the Civil War. Up until then, and banks were issuing their own currency. Oh. But I'm thinking it's something silly, like one mill. No, the lowest... Based value. Some of these I may have to accept whichever team comes closest to getting the right answer on. <laughs> yeah, these are I mean, these are questions that would stump a serious collector, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting topic for sure. By the way, I did like your 19 or the llama head shilling. Llama <laughs> shilling, yeah. Okay. That was an actual thing, or that's just no. I, I just no, I just no, wanted no. to make up a, a, a name of a fictional coin that there was no chance of it actually existing anywhere. That's good. That's a good <laughs> and, good idea. And, and for some reason, I thought of a llama. Imagine no, that. <laughs> All right. So lowest face value for currency. Uh. Why are they spelling dimes so funny? Uh, I don't know. That's the way they in, spelled it. In, in Weird. Um... So if I'm looking for to, to answer number four, I'm reading number five to say 10 mils make a cent. Right. And what did you say, Lee, uh, for your guess for number four was? I'm thinking something like one mil. But was a mil made as... Because currency implies paper, right? Whereas a coin is, which that makes me go back up to number one, is the lowest face value of any U.S. Right. coin a half cent or is it a mil? Right. Because 10 mils make a cent. That's a good So point. a half cent would still be five mils. Yeah. So was a mil made as an individual... Yeah, could be one mil. Or was it one of those where a coin was never one individual mil? A coin was either five mils or, you know. 
That I don't know. Or could it, could it have been that a coin was one mil, you know, and then over time, you know, with inflation, inflation and yep, yeah. yep, could be. Yeah, I'm okay with changing one. I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't maybe know anything for sure. So I'm 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 fine with whatever <laughs> the consensus for the team is. Well, I, I I of course have no idea, but I I would tend to wonder if it might just be one mil for number one, or at least ten mil. Well, yeah. you know, one mil, no, because that would be a cent. One, so one, ten I would mils think make one, a cent. I would think one mil. Either one mil, or maybe the things were never that low so the lowest denomination was like a five mil piece which a five mil piece would equal half a cent yes it would but i don't know it could easily be a mil as well i'm torn because i don't want to steer any i don't want to steer the team wrong but i really don't know for sure it's it's a wild guess I, I, us let's just take a guess do we want to do change it to a one mil that's what i would think but no idea Okay, so what do we think the lowest face value for U.S. currency? So if we if we there extrapolate, you know, to like modern day, if 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 one mil, if it used to be one mil, and then um, Mil, 10 oh, mils make a cent 10 cents make a dime we not have the nickel i don't i don't know do we ever have any currency that was less than a dollar maybe the lowest currency is a dollar and it's a trick question i i have no idea these questions well, yeah, because are at what point did they did they decide that they were carrying around too much too much coins. weight in coins and they right. needed to exactly. switch to um it could be like a 50 mil note i don't know i think anything that we guess we're just yeah. making an educated guess so we just got to kind of yeah whatever you, what we think. whatever you you think uh any i'm lost i don't know anybody guess. have a thought here do we think it's lower than a lower than a dollar yeah you think a 50 um, uh, 50 cents or uh, or half dollar or you know we had half dollar coins did we also have a half they dollar have currency a half, there is a half dollar coin so I wonder if it is one dollar. No, if we don't have an answer, we'll just say a dollar and hope that. All right. So, what does ten dollars make? Um. I mean, a ten dollar bill. We know that, but was it called something? Oh, I have, I don't know my old currency at all. Um, obviously, I don't know, but like just thinking about language, uh, it might be something that starts with a D. Yeah, like a deca. deca. Yeah. Something. Oh yeah, that's not a bad guess, Lee. Do we like that? Like just a deca. Carl did say that it'd be the closest on some of these, because I'm guessing all the teams are struggling based upon what he said to us. Yeah. Okay, so to contain nickel. I would have thought it was a nickel. And that's why it was named the nickel, because it used to contain nickel. That's not, just what I thought. I mean, it's not a bad guess. No. It just seems like it's given away the answer, but maybe he's trying to be cheeky there with, you know, giving, <laughs> giving us some freebies. 
Okay, what percent nickel by weight is the five cent piece? Which isn't. Which is saying that there is nickel in the five cent piece. Right. But today, how much nickel? Because here's the thing. People react to nickel, but yep. if it, if the core is nickel and then it's surrounded by another metal, then it's not, it'll keep people from reacting. Right. And, and, and he does not, he does not distinguish what the date is on, on this question. Um, but it, it occurred My guess to is me he that, means currently, but yeah, I could yeah be it occurred to me that it could change over time, but, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, I would guess that it might be a, a, a small percent, but I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. 20%? Okay. I don't know anything about metals, so I, I would defer to you guys on this. I, I have no idea. I guess 20. My other thought was 50%. I have no idea. I'm just Let's guessing. Go 20. Let's go 20. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't know metallurgy. All right. Uh, what was the year that Susan B. Anthony dollar was minted? No idea. Probably. That was like when I was a kid. I remember having Susan B. Anthony. Yeah. I just don't know if there were ones prior to that, though. It seems to me like it was brought back. Late 60s, early, early 70s. So again, this was uh, what was the last year it was minted? No. So we're not worried about how early it was, just when the last year yeah, that right. it was made. Uh, we're thinking they were only in circulation for a few years because weren't they 12-sided and they didn't work in vending machines? They were jamming up vending machines? Yeah, but I distinctly remember seeing a bunch of them as a kid. So I would say that there was the potential that they were up and in, into the 80s that they were made. Yeah, but I it's sort really of have cool. this vague memory of them bringing it back. Like how recent are we talking? I don't know. I just sort of remember them, like it, them bringing it back and then doing away with it again. But I, I don't know if that's a, a real memory or not. I, I don't know when it was. I don't know. I mean, don't do you have that memory at all of them bringing it back and it being well, like? I, I remember having deal? them. As a kid, I just don't know if it had happened since then. Yeah. Because it's definitely, I would think, as they were minted in the 80s. I just don't know if it's ha happened again after that. Do you, do you have a sense of it being in the early 80s or the late 80s? I almost want to say late 80s. Let's just pick a year. 87. Eight oh seven. I don't care. What we don't know what his range is, so we don't know if we're going to be within <laughs> okay. that range or not. Who knows? They they may have remade them in in the, in the late nineties, early two thousands. I have no idea. Highest melt value relative to the face value. This was the one that where you said the penny yeah, because I, of the yeah, copper. I think, the, I think it's the penny because I think okay. the copper. No, I would agree with that, Lee. About the only one I feel confident in. I know. I'm like, ugh. I'm thinking this is going to be another lighthouse round. <laughs> uh, it's it's good info though. It's fun to learn about currency. It's just we don't know. All right. What was the last year that U.S. minted coins for circulation containing silver? Ooh. So like a silver dollar? Yeah, because I think obviously they make some like commemorative type stuff that has silver in it to this day. But here he's asking about circulation. So when was the last time? Yeah, probably the silver dollar. I don't know if silver was in anything else other than the silver dollar, if it was in any 50 cent pieces or quarters or something back in the day. But again, we're we're more worried about the last year. So I think um, it was in the mid sixties that they stopped it because I can remember later being in high school that you know, every time you get a silver quarter, I used to throw it in a in a little box in my drawer because Oh nice. Figured those were going to be worth something someday. Sure. 
So you're thinking like 60, what, mid 60s, late 60s? I think it was like 64, 60, I think it was like 64, something like that. Okay, we'll go with 64. I think we have an answer for everything. <laughs> just yeah. have no idea how many yeah. points we're going to get. <laughs> no. This is a really interesting uh, bunch of uh, information, you know, uh, yeah, to is. learn about. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Stop it. I'm trying to move windows around while I'm sharing my screen. It makes it tough. Yeah. All right. Well, I wonder, Carl, when are you going to call people back? How's the homeschooling going, Ben? Uh, pretty good so far. I mean, the kids are really enjoying it, um, especially since, you know, my my now high schooler when they were in junior high, the bunch of just really bad behaving kids in in junior high. So I got to see that firsthand when we were out to out to lunch at the local Dairy Queen that's right across the street from the high school, but it's also, you know, where some of the junior high kids hang out and stuff, because that's it's a park too, and it's a bunch of like ball fields and stuff and man the kids that came into the dairy queen were very disrespectful yeah i recall you telling a little story about some of the behavior that they were yep. so i can't remember exactly what they did but yeah I they were bringing you... in their own cups and essentially stealing drinks from the from the right from the restaurant and then acting like they weren't and getting all offended like look at them they're persecuting us it's like no you're being idiots you're stealing from the restaurant it's yeah. pretty easy to tell when you watch them filling their drinks from the from the soda machine in domino's plastic cups right. pretty apparent that's not a dairy right. Queen cup. like they're not geniuses yeah, and then and the, they ended up calling the cops because the kids wouldn't leave when they were asked to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad. Unfortunately, all they're going to do is send them to their parents, and kids that have parents like that probably don't care anyway. Yeah. yeah oftentimes, that's true. Yep. No, well, I know I have a, a dear friend who was a teacher, and... You know, he'd have like parent teacher conferences and maybe 10% of the parents would show up. You know, wow. Just, just so frustrating that, uh, you know, you know, they're sitting all, and, geez, these kids have such terrible behavior and they have parents at home that are either drunk or high on drugs. And I don't know. It's, I'd like to see more places do like where they uh, in Colorado where they offer free uh, birth control. And there's a lot of people that should, you know, and, uh, I remember showing up to a PTA meeting when my girls were in school and I was the first male that had shown up in years. Wow. I got yeah, I... You know, like a dad that's actually interested in that. <laughs> I got elected I, vice president of the PTA because it was like wow. you know, it was the first Y chromosome they had seen. <laughs> I try to I always tried to make it to their um parent teacher conferences as long as I was able to get away from work. Yeah, well see I was pretty lucky because I, I've always been in kind of a sales engineering role, so I could always lie and now hey, I'm out to see going out to see a client and kind of you know, and as long as you're as long as you were bringing in revenue to the company, they didn't really. They really, didn't harp on your clock in, clock out times yeah. and all that. Of course, yeah. of course, then on the other hand, if you had a big project, you were expected to complete it. And if that meant working an 18 hour day, you worked an 18. Oof. Yeah. That's never fun. Yeah. I'm in IT, so I've had plenty of times where I've had the. Oh. I've had the 36 hour day before because stuff was down and yeah. you didn't go anywhere yeah. until no, things no, were I, back up and running. I was um, doing software on PBXs back in the old days. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talking about, yeah, I remember going to one big cutover 
I got there Friday night, had a rented a hotel room, never my luggage never left the car. I was wow. night and Sunday afternoon they finally sent me home. I mean, I did a straight 48 hours of just typing into, you know, these translations and getting everything up and running. And I just remember driving home from Oakland and playing Beach Boy music really loud. So, I, so I'd so you fall asleep. I'd fall asleep, yeah. Yep. Boom, here we go. Uh, everybody back. Good timing. Good day. So, Rob, when is your uh, talk with uh, Mr. Teller? You're still muted. So, not this coming week, next week, the week after this week. This week, this week I'm doing Bill Nye. And um, yeah, so Teller, that's interesting. I looked him up and he does not use a first name. Apparently, I, I hadn't thought about that before, but it, it, his Wikipedia article literally just says Teller. And then it has his birth name, but there's no first name listed. So I assume that's because he doesn't like using anything but Teller. Anybody else hear about that? I don't know. I didn't know that. All right. You'll have to ask him, Rob. I was joking that I need to learn American Sign Language in order to talk to him. People were like, I was serious about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ask him about his Shakespeare play. So, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Somebody wrote that. Did you write that? Like, what is that about? He did a, a play here. He what? Uh, what about? Say it again. He, he did a play here that he did outside of the Smith Center that ran, it was at, it had, they increased the, the time on it. And it's, the play Prospero, it's about, um, about I the Tempest. Better. So you, when you said Tempest. he did a play, he acted in it or he wrote a he play? Took, he used the Tempest. He used the actual script from Shakespeare, but magic is part of the Tempest. And the person playing Pros the, the main character actually did real magic as part of it. And he wow. changed the whole feeling of the play. It was, he was, he was giving up everything at the end because he had to give up magic. All right, so, but when you said, so what was Teller's part in it? He, he produced it. He produced it. Okay. Thanks. I'll tell him I ask him about that. Thank you. All right. Answers. All right. You, you're going to ignore the date on this PowerPoint presentation because I was originally going to do this a different week. Uh -huh. All right. So, hey. number one was the half cent. Hmm. They made 1793 to 1857. Oh, I've never heard about a half penny. Darn it. Sorry, Lee. Should have left that answer alone. Carolyn gets a gold star. She knew that. We had that and talked ourselves out of it. Yep. We mm -hmm. totally did the same thing. Yep. Lee was on it and we ruined it. Number two. Write that down, Gail. $100 yeah. for the one ounce platinum. Yeah. Beyond... Uh. Got it. <laughs> That's two good guesses for me. Number three, $20 with a gold Yay. coin. Number so, four, so three cents. Oh, oh wow, weird. weird. During the Civil War, the United States had uh, trouble coming up with sufficient alloy to make coins, yeah. not enough silver going around. So they used the authority they had under the laws for being able to make postage stamps to print fractional currency in Three cent, ten cent, fifty cent, all sorts of denominations. Three cent was the lowest denomination they made. I wow. remember receiving a postcard uh, when I was five years old that had a three cent stamp on it. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. those. So number that's five. That's not a stamp. That's a that's a three cent bill. Yeah, this three is, cent this bill. is three cent cent. actual currency, but made under mm -hmm. the authority of the postal regulations. So. Yeah. Not a stamp. It's, it's not a stamp. stamp. Number five, an eagle. Ten dollars makes an eagle. Oh, an eagle. Oh, of course. Okay. Specifically listed as such in the 1792 uh, 
Could that we go? Oh my god, how can I forget? Coin eject. Oh god. I thought that was a golf thing. And then uh, unofficially, <laughs> Ken Eagle would, would unofficially make a union. But no oh, such no. coin was ever gotten of course. made. Oh, shit. The I cent, know. or I will accept penny, from mm. 1857 to 64 was made of 12% nickel and 88% copper. It is the first U.S. coin to be referred to as a nickel or a nick. Um. And it, you can kind of tell it's slightly whitish in color compared to... Oh, I should have known that. Penny. Number seven. The U.S. five cent piece is 25% nickel and 75% copper and has been uh, since the yeah. five cent piece yeah. replaced the half dime. Oh, darn it. Can, can, we, get, can we get an extra nine points because we need them all because we got that exactly right? Uh, <laughs> can can we expand wrong? the range because we oh, picked 20%? By the way, by <laughs> what, what's the closest anyone came on the, the three cent currency? I said 50%. Which one is the three? Which, which answer was three cents? Number four. Number four. Uh, number four. What was what was the closest anyone came we to? We thought it was a trick question. We said it was a dollar. We, it was, we, said, yeah. we said it was a dollar, too. What's, oh, what, said cent. what did other teams have? A we dollar. said one cent. One cent? One cent. I, I will be generous and award a point for coming closer. Bob Barker rules. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number eight. 1999. I got that oh, one. Right. In 1999, the U.S. Mint produced 41 million, etc., Anthony dollars as a stopgap measure oh, to replenish yeah. the dollar coin supplies until production began on the new gold-colored Sacagawea dollar in 2000. Prior hmm. to that, they had the the last year was 1981. From 79 to uh, 81 was the first run. What's the range? 97 to 2001. Yeah, but we got 99 exactly. Yeah, we hmm. did. any answer between know. 97 and 2001 will be considered a point. Hmm. Number nine, the five cent piece, I will also accept nickel, even though that's not really the name of the coin, has a melt value of 0. 0.056, blah, blah, blah. As of July 11, right. 2023, it's barely hypothetically profitable to melt it. No hmm. other coin would be profitable to melt. Wow. I thought the quarter had a lot of copper in it, or the half dollar. <laughs> The half dollar right. doesn't have a lot of copper in it. It not, has a lot of copper, but it doesn't, have, it doesn't have more than 50 cents worth of copper and nickel. Right. I can actually, penny, after we're done, I can thing. show you what the melt value of each current coin is. I thought, I thought at one time they were melting down pennies for copper. You still can. Uh, well, <laughs> penny, pennies made before 1982 would, would be profitable to melt as well. But since 80, since 82, they've been 97.5% zinc. Mm -hmm. oh, and finally, number 10... 1970. Although hey, dimes hey. and quarters were last minted, hey. made out of silver in 64, from 65 to 70, the half dollar was minted in 40% copper by weight, uh, special copper uh, silver clad. Yeah. Oh, we were close on that one. Oh. So I looked at 69 <laughs> to 71 as a correct answer, unless nobody got in that range. Well, I got 1970 on that one. 1970? Yeah. Yep. I, I have some. That's a good 40, answer. 40% 40, 40 silver. Mm -hmm. yep. I think I have yeah, some I too. Yeah. Hmm. The special mint sets too were like that. Yep. Oh, that's why. No. All right. And so hmm. bring up the chat. No, it, was it was regular currency though, wasn't it? Or was it yeah, only special? The, the half dollar. Yeah. 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 Regular currency. Yeah. That, that is also the alloy they made the special collector versions of the 75 and 76 quarter half dollar and dollars for the bicentennial celebration mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. okay let's take some answers in here hmm. three we have answers in. Jesus, i thought a nickel was like 90 percent nickel mm -hmm. I was yeah, I thought... and then I, then i thought no it's probably 50 percent you're pasting the, you're pasting the questions back in Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Copy and pasting the wrong question. Thank you. <laughs> uh. I want to go back to the future again. Me yes. too. Right? <laughs> Got a new lighthouses. Going to call it currency. All right. <laughs> There's your first three. Oh. Excuse me. 
Scores. Ben. Scores. Ben. Yes, let's do scores. I was letting Carl paste all the answers in. We can, we can multitask. We can. Well, but I'm also trying to copy and paste stuff into the and spreadsheet for Susan. Your values. Um, all right, let's get some scores. Do, do, do. All right. So, Burning Man, another name. Oh, wait, actually, sorry. 22 years, new high score. Be proud, boy. We got three. <laughs> wow. Wow. Holy crap. I thought we Holy did more crap. than that. Triple their score. All Not right. bad. Hardcore uh, coin collector would have done okay on this round. Burning Man, another name for UTI. Yeah, we blew them away. We got four. Wow. <laughs> good, good. All right. Um, let's go with uh, we always knew that Navarro is contemptible. We had six. Oh, wow. Ooh. We have a trend going here. Yeah. Do. Okay, Canada is still burning. One. So much for that oh. trend. Hey, you're number well, one. Uh, we had to bring back the curse in a big way, so we also got a one. Yay! Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yes. All right. We got the percentage of nickel and we got the twenty dollar gold piece. No, we had twenty percent and the range was twenty one to twenty nine. Yeah, we put twenty, not twenty five. Unfortunately. And we missed the first one. Sorry, Lee. You had that one and we talked you out of it. And if anyone's interested, the the questions and answers are in the chat available for download. All right. I will stop my screen share and thanks, Carl. That was ready? great. Ready Susan for would love bonus. this. Penny, penny for your thoughts, right. Carol. <clears throat> my next round that I do will not be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you all ready for the bonus? Yeah. Sure. Ah, okay. Okay, so the bonus is just 10 answers of which states have the safest highway. So there's 10 Ooh. states, and this is based on insurance.org. And the the factors they considered, uh, were, and not necessarily in order of importance for each one, but speeding fatalities, deaths per mile traveled, seatbelt use, federal funding, and whether their bridges were obsolete or deficient. So, so go forth. And so do they, they go by wrecks? Because uh, some things, because it sounds like you're referring to the highway and not the drivers. Like we noticed some states seem to have more idiot drivers. <laughs> they do <laughs> yeah and i think they it's do, both but, it's, it's but both. that's different than having the road themselves be safe right so, so the, it's based on like each state's i guess statistics on those different factors so can you put the factors into the chat yeah, yeah. repeat the factors so okay i'll, I'll drop those in there like like how many bridges collapsed in the year or something like that? Like per no, mile. No, I think they just went through. Um, let me just do this first. They just went through and used those things as um, factors to judge whether the the state was had the safest roads or not. And this is oh, per mile of road or per mile driven by car. Th those were also factors. So deaths per mile traveled, okay. speeding fatal fatalities, whether they had federal funding or not. I, I don't know what their calculation was. I don't know what formula they used. They just, in describing each, 
they had like a little brief thing on each state and it, and it said, well, because it's mostly because of this reason or because of that reason. I'll give you the website when we're done. You can go look at it. And the overall bonus round was what top 10? The, 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 the safest highways, the top safest 10. Safest highways. This, yeah. Top but 10 states. States. The safest the states. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now let's see here. I oh, guess. I didn't give you power since. Oh, okay. I That's can why open I all the rooms. Sorry. Okay. I'll I'll add you. Okay. Thank you. But because this, the, de the density of people there is going to mean the fatalities will be higher. Yeah, but then when you go out to the states that have lots and lots of roads, they like Montana has got to be on the list. They have lots of roads that aren't well kept, though. But okay. there's no fatalities, really. So this is all fatalities. She said safest. Oh, safest. Like accidents, yeah. right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, ben, I don't know that. I don't think I can move around. I don't know what kind of powers you gave me, but I don't think I can move. So what, yeah, what hold are the on. safest states we're looking for, Deborah? I should have given you powers before yeah. the breakout rooms. Uh, can I do it from here? I think I can. Hold on. Okay. Oh, seriously? <laughs> and see, the bridges, too. Hold I feel on. Like... I'm going to leave the room, and then hopefully I'll be able to. I just There's hope you don't have to do that. Yeah, you should leave, too, so he can send you over. You Both of you should leave. Yeah, we'll be back. All right. I will. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. I think uh, Carl's co-host, I think he opened the breakout rooms before I could give you uh, permission. So let's do that now. Participants, Deborah, make co-host. There you go. You are now a co-host. Sorry about that. You should be good to go now. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. All right. Then five, not so. You know what That's I mean? That's a good idea. So we cover both ends of it. Meet in the middle. Like five okay, like Montana's and then five like Massachusetts, New York, California. Uh, California might be a good one, but then it goes. Uh, have, so I'm going to interrupt for a second. Yeah. And I'm going to pause recording. Yeah. Are you good, Rob? Right. You got Deborah came to you. Yes, thank you. To help you. Okay, yes. cool. I'll go back. You know, we were confused about because she never wrote down ten top safe as what, and we weren't. We were a little debating whether she meant states or just highway driving. So she said the states was correct. So I hope everyone knows. Okay, that. so the, the what state the highway is? Right. I guess predominantly in because some highways can be in multiple. Well, but states. it's not just highways. It's deaths in yeah, the no, state. So like it's I said, like highway. a lot of people it's, die it's in Manhattan state. and Brooklyn and Queens and whatever. And we said, well, those aren't okay. highways. Yeah, but we just ignore those deaths. All right, what's your take on this one, Ben? Okay, sorry. I did, They asked for help, but Deborah was there to explain some stuff. I don't know if she's going to hop to the rest of the rooms and explain it, but I heard it is the top 10 states, but it's related because there's deaths other than highway deaths, but this is just related to highway deaths. So, but because then I'm like, but a highway could potentially go you know, highways obviously span multiple states. So how do we factor that in? Where it happens. It must be where it happens. Right. Because again, it they're they're essentially collating the data of how many deaths happened in the state of New York on a highway in the state of New York. And so we're looking for the top ten and we're we're going for the safest, right? Not the most right. deaths. So we want the top ten safest. So 
I don't know if that helps, but that's just what what I overheard in the discussion when I went into. But not Rob, Rob was asking for Listen, clarification. It's deaths, it's deaths, not just accidents, right? Minor accidents. I, that yes, happened. that that was was mentioned was death. So we're looking for, I guess, the least. I uh, yeah, that's odd. You would think that it's much easier to calculate the the deadliest highways, you know, which states had the deadliest highways than the opposite. Yeah, well, they do that, and then we look at the bottom of the list. Right. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, much. That part I have no problem with. That's just the inverse of the other. Yep. So we, we get this list, and we want to go to the bottom of the list and say which ones are the safest. Yeah, exactly. So um, you, How you score do you guys want me to ever type it out, or do is one of you starting to record some states or no? If you're volunteering, take the lead. We had a couple we were tossing around. Well, Actually, what, what do you think? We have a theory. What do you think yeah. it would be? What type of state would it be? A heavily populated one or an unheavily populated one? North, south, you know, snowy, whatever, mountains? Um, I can tell you that I would think, let's see, is uh, I don't see anything specifically mentioning this as a factor that were was considered, but you're going to have a lot more fatalities in in bad climates. I, being in the Midwest, I know it's probably I don't know if it's worse, because, you know, you would think that a northern state that's constantly snowy, their drivers would be used to it and would know how to drive correctly in it. But the amount of people that I see being in, you know, Missouri and Illinois, uh, in the ditch, during mm -hmm. during the rain or during sleet or snow is ridiculous. So that may be a uh, a factor that, to consider. That you don't want that. I've right. always heard that the states, uh, the 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 roads in Massachusetts are pretty safe because they're well maintained. But right. There's a lot of people here, but I was thinking, you know, like upstate New York, but New York City has a lot. Are there that many accidents and fatalities and good roads? So I'm wondering if it's we should be looking for like Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, or Alaska, Texas, not the Texas, Alaska, uh, Montana. Montana. Is Kansas. is accidents happening in Alaska and Montana because it's cold or because there's right. so few people, there's less accidents? Yeah, because so, again, so I don't know federal, fund, to... federal funding is on the list. So I know, again, in the Midwest, they, they freaking don't patch potholes like at all. So I don't know how much that contributes to to accidents. So I, I would agree, Kevin, that um, states that have better maintained roads are probably going to be safer. So what what are we thinking? Do we want uh, Massachusetts on our list? I want I want to pick five, and I want okay. Kyle to pick five that are like Montana, <laughs> and I'm going to pick five like Massachusetts. All right, That's what let's I was do thinking. It that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I I was going with Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, the New England states, basically. Vermont, and you said New Hampshire. Yeah. Do I get five there? Yeah. Yeah, but I also put his Montana in there. Yep, already. that's fine. Okay. And he's going to pick five, four more. Okay. Like Montana. Right. I think he said Kansas already. Let's add Kansas. Okay. And, and you said Alaska. Oh, and I wasn't sure. I don't want to talk. Let's put enough. Idaho. Ooh. Idaho. And then. Uh, we got eight. We need two more. Between um, New Mexico and Arizona, one is very underpopulated. I think that's New Mexico, right? Yeah. Do they have good roads there? They're funded because there's a lot of Indian people that live there. To the I reservation, I thought more in Arizona. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, that's the, that's a really interesting thing because can you consider something the safest with its fatalities being lower if it's a way less populous state? Well, that's the whole struggle here. But yeah, no, and... none of the factors considered mention anything about you know per capita per population. That I can see, because like speeding, that should be the same everywhere. It's not like 
people from California are real leadfoots, you know, right. like. Well, there could be, yeah, I don't know if it's one of those where certain highway, uh, certain states have a lot higher um, speed limits on their highways. You know, you go to some states, and it's like, oh, my God, you can only go 55. And other ones, it's like, oh, you can go 75 here. Right. It takes my you like a day to go across Texas. Is, is that that doesn't correlate with accidents. That speed okay. limit is irrelevant. It's only to bill people. Right. Yep. I can see that. Because no matter what the speed limit is, everybody's doing 5 to 10 over anyway. Yeah. And then the bridges thing is a wild card. Because I want to yeah. pick places that have like limited infrastructure, like Kansas. Right. Whereas, like, you know, Chicago has bridges everywhere. What are we at? Nine. We need one more. Nine, one more. Where does no one go? North Dakota, maybe? <laughs> North Dakota? North yeah. Dakota. W Wyoming? Oh, Did I like want... Wyoming, actually. All right. All right, where is... We have our 10. <laughs> okay, there they are. Okay, I'm 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 gonna close rooms. Okay, close them rooms. Ten states I have never visited. There you go. <laughs> I've been to Rhode Island. I, I like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware too. I don't know Maryland. I don't know. It could be anything. Yeah. Okay. Because I went true. to I Rhode Island and toured Hasbro. Mm -hmm. Did you? That was fun. I live, yep. I live like the next town over in that. Yeah, board. I saw your picture of the yeah, potato yeah. head. But yeah, I've actually been inside for, for yeah, a tour. My wife worked for fun. them for a while. My oh, really? Awesome. It. Yeah. She hated it, though. They weren't nice oh. to her. <laughs> oh, jerks. I have a friend who works in the IT department there, though. He loves it. He's been there for years. Oh, nice. That'd and, be awesome. I mean, I do IT. I'd love to do IT for yeah. Hasbro and get all the sweet toys. Yeah. And they, oh, they used to bring the kids in. But te you can bring your kids in there and they do tests. The kids get to play with the toys in a, oh, in a nice. study room or something. Yeah, I was there because they had one of the I, – I'm a huge fan of Transformers, and that's – oh. So, as I was saying, Janine, you're in the right place for it. Well, if you would like to come up for it, you're you're welcome. Uh, I've got a problem is that the Alumni Association at Humboldt is throwing a party for me that weekend. That's that's a problem. <laughs> you got to choose a party for Bill or an eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> you know. A, wanting to take a picture of that eclipse. It's, both of them are once in a lifetime. What are you going to do? Huh? Yeah. I know. But that, it's also October in Oregon. Which is Think chilly, about... chilly and foggy, and yeah. and, and stormy, and stormy. And okay, you guys. Good, it's early in the morning, so it's going to be pretty low on the eastern. Hill. Are you guys ready for uh, your answers? Yes, we yes. have answers. Okay, um, I'll put them in the chat as soon as I after I finish reading them, and I'll also put the website in there. So, um, in reverse order, I guess um, Maine. Isn't number 10. Oh, state of I think of that. <laughs> Nevada is nine. Um, okay. North Dakota is eight. Oh, oh, talked about that. Oh, it said one of the Dakotas. Delaware is seven. Okay. Yeah. Wisconsin is six. Ooh, forgot wow. about that. And you have to say it correctly. You have to say Wisconsin, not <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> Um, number four is Nebraska. Oh, yeah, that's we should have thought of that one. Actually, actually yeah. five. Sorry, my the numbers are wrong on here. Okay, it's number five. Sorry, number four is Alaska. Hey. Let's say that. There, fix that. I oh, won't come back here. Okay. There. Um, number three is Oregon. <laughs> oh guys oh, we took it we off talked, we talked ourselves out of that one the, the, the website had nice things to say about oregon <laughs> oh that's nice yeah uh they i think they I, if i remember i did this a week ago but i think they said something about that they know what they're doing when they're driving over there it's so um, actually because everybody oregon. 
No. It's so safe because everybody is at a standstill, not moving. So <laughs> they can't. I didn't notice. I didn't notice that. You know what? The Going through the they, construction in Oregon is really safe. And yeah, and the other thing is, is that that they when it snows, they just stop. Nobody they don't go goes, anywhere. Nobody yeah, that's goes true. anywhere. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, number two is Iowa. Oh. And and number one is Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Oh, wow, yeah. we do bad. I think we got Ooh. one, right, Kyle? We did terrible. We got three, I think. Damn. We got three. Oh, no. Did I kill oh, my well, team? Two lighthouse three rounds in one game. Me. <laughs> it shouldn't uh, have been that hard. Uh, I, I want to see the answers to confirm. Okay, there you go. And then um, if anybody wants to see this website. Because we yeah. did, we talked about, what the, why is it pasting the wrong thing? We it's talked about Alaska, Oregon. but we never actually put it on our list. Correct, yeah. That's my oh, bad. We had, the website we does a little bit we of. It, we rejected it some more northern states because we thought that uh, snow would be responsible for causing some deaths. Yeah, I, well, and, and is. <laughs> I don't know. They they explain their reasoning on the website, and, and I'm sure that not every other website probably does probably agrees with their thing. But I, I think probably it's overall, you know, I mean, this totally had the right idea. Yeah. All so, right, you know, we, we focused you? on states with not a lot of big giant urban centers mostly. Yeah, well, the the I did try. I started out looking up the like the most dangerous highways, and most of them are in the east, and there oh, are yeah. interchanges. Like like it says, oh, the interchange between this highway and that highway and this other highway is the like the worst one in the whole country or something. And I was like, I've never heard of any of those highways, and it's probably nobody else has either, unless they yeah, live we there. We have a lot of accidents <laughs> on four ninety five and ninety five and two ninety five in Mass. I think they mentioned that because yeah. <laughs> that's not familiar anything that ends in 95 you want to stay away from yeah yeah, yeah. well 395 isn't bad but there's nobody on it so that's yeah. connecticut i'm gonna go are to we bed. ready are we ready hey, for robin. scores can i robin, Hi, robin. Hi, robin. Hi, robin. we need uh, robin well so, we we will kick it off 22 years new high score be proud boy because of course Ooh. I wanted to say it one last time. Uh we got zero. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Yes, we got zero. <laughs> you couldn't possibly get zero. I'm sure you I did. saw at least one right answer. No, I looked we talked ourselves long. out of Alaska. Like, yeah. Damn. You know, we we talked Damn about Alaska geez. and we didn't put I it talked on myself it. out of Maine. I said, yeah. no, I'm gonna go with the lowest states. And um all right. <laughs> Canada is still burning. We actually got two. Oh, nice. Well done. There we go. Okay, next up we got uh, Burning Man, another name for UTI. And we slaughtered you guys. We got three. Oh, wow. Good job. Okay. Um, we always knew that Navarro is contemptible. Four. Oh, four. look at that. Oh, look, it's, it's going two, three, up. Four? Uh, wow. Two, three, four. Wow. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> Our, our, our Oregonian talked us out of Oregon. Oh, no. Is <laughs> Danny Masterson a fan of good grammar? Seven. 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 Ooh, that was impressive. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. impressive. Right. Most impressive. <clears throat> I, I, my mind is blown. That we did All that. right. <laughs> that was tough. All right, then. Yep. Well, sorry that was so hard. I didn't think, I, I didn't think it was going to be easy, but I didn't think it would be that hard. Good. Susan will be happy. She likes yeah, them. She's going to be yeah. thrilled. Oh, good. Yeah, That's thrilled. good. Look, look, look at the game above in, in uh, the fourth round. There's a 1.5 average. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, but when and you only have. That's Susan asking the question. And there's two still teams. two more points than when the ones in the RogerEbert.com round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Right. Good night, everybody. Right. Yeah, good, good night, night everybody. Good night, everyone. Hey, did yeah. uh, do we have? Did she already get people for next time? No, we don't have that. <gasps> ben. So, ben. does anyone have Wisconsin or Loa? Yeah, <gasps> I forgot. No. Loa. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wisconsin. And, you know, Wisconsin. If you had I didn't know, 
You did not get it right. <laughs> no, no. Oh. Nobody would put Idaho down on as as a safe. My yeah, yeah. for any yeah. for any. We did. We did. I we thought did. so. All right. Uh, I was thinking they don't drink much. Drink no. out Idaho. That was one I They're knew. Busy picking potatoes. We thought you know. Yeah. So everyone that's still here has to do a round, apparently. <laughs> Susan's gonna gonna fire me for her uh, replacement since I forgot to get. I, uh, ben, I have a bonus. Oh, okay. Thank you. Ready to go. Well, you can just, put me down I've never again. done I a bonus. I'll do two weeks in a row, but I, I, I could do one. Yeah. If, if All right. So you could put both Rob and me down, and if Susan wants to try and contact people and replace us, that's yeah. fine. I can do one. I didn't do one this week. Okay. Oh yeah, you haven't. It's been a week or so. It's been, All right, it's been a whole week. week yeah. I did one. It's been oh, a week. Yeah. Every other week, I try to do one every three weeks. Kevin's like, I yeah, can do another. Sure. There's all sorts of songs I can make trivia around. Yeah, that's, true. Really, that's Kevin, what it is. You know, Kevin every time I listen fun. to a song, an oldie, I always think, would Kevin make one out of this? Let me oh. listen to the lyrics really carefully. <laughs> I've done about six or seven songs in a couple of movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I may not, I may not know all the answers, but Kevin's rounds are always very entertaining. Yep, they're fun. fun yeah yeah they're very fun it's yeah. like a crossword puzzle that's what i think of it as yeah yeah it's kind of like yeah, a hint yeah. for a crossword puzzle and then somehow the crossword puzzle has a theme okay you got yeah. them yeah, very, yeah. very you got easy i got you i need one song, more you know? round i have three rounds lee, and lee, lee, lee you got lee, one lee has his hand up literally is that a hand up or are you saying bye put the hand up i'll take okay, one. okay great. all right. right all right thank you everyone and i am sorry i have a question I have a question for Lee. Uh -oh. I gotta go. Thanks for running it. Do, do your All right, mama thanks, take Rob. any money for you? <laughs> I do sell some animals. I do sell some fleece. Uh, but like a friend of mine said, uh, if you want to make a small fortune in llamas, start out with a large fortune. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so how much you know, fencing do they require? How many animals do you plan on having? No, no, no. I mean, like, how good of a fence? I'm used to dairy cows. Uh, they're llamas, as long as they're well fed, I think you could keep them in with kite string. <laughs> it's not like, like goats that are going to try to escape all the time. So sheep seem to just take little electric fence all the way around. Yeah, I don't, I don't use electric. I, um, uh, you know, most of my fencing is about uh, four feet, and I've never had anybody. They can't jump? They can. They're quite capable of it, but they're herd animals. They want to stay with their herd. I mean, the only so, time I've ever, I, um, I have a friend who had a neighbor across the road that had this nasty little chihuahua that would come across the street and sit there and bark at the llamas. And did it day after day after day. And she said, if I hadn't seen this looking out the kitchen window, she was all of a sudden one of my llamas, you thought it was like Santa's reindeer. And it went completely over the fence, chased that little chihuahua down the road, back up to its front door and just stood there staring it down. And, <laughs> you know, she went out with a halter and a rope and brought the llama back. But that was the only time she's ever had That one. was enough. Did the did the chihuahua yeah. stay home after that? He, he never never came back after that. Never you came know. back. I if have you video. Seven or eight pounds and something 400 pounds comes after you, you pretty well. <laughs> but I have oh, yeah. video. We have, we have a sheep herd that was out here. We have a very large herd of elk. I have pictures of the the sheep, the flock of sheep chasing the elk out <laughs> across the field, across the road, down the way. Territorial then, are they? <laughs> well, so. you know, I thought that for a long time and it suddenly occurred to me that I suspect what happened was that they had um, a great Pyrenees in with the sheep that from the distance I was watching those sheep chase that elk herd, I could not see that it was being led by the Great Pyrenees and oh, the sheep okay. were following the Great That's <laughs> my best explanation now. But I watched that happen and I was laughing so 
hard. Oh, I did I not bet. believe what I was seeing. I, I'm actually <laughs> kind of surprised that a, the, the herd of elk would even be afraid of a great Pyrenees. I mean, they're bigger, much bigger than any of those things. Well, oh, they are a herd black. of sheep. <laughs> Of course, there was a lot of them, so maybe yeah. you know, yes. maybe you thought it was yeah. a herd of Great Pyrenees. Do you, do you have Do you have a uh, bellwether that is very possessive, Janine? Uh, me, I have nothing but chickens at this point. <laughs> oh, and and an inheritance of the farm. Okay, and you, I'm just you, you throwing have... ideas around, you no. know. Oh. No, I was wondering if if in the herd of uh, sheep you had a uh, and a, a bellwether that uh, took care of them so oh i don't know what was out there it's not my sheep that was chasing the elk oh i was just watching the sheep chase the elk across That's well jane funny. knows that wolf front pasture in front of us they came big. all the way across that field across the road and down okay you do know what a bellwether is right as a ram who's no longer a ram. Yeah. 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 And usually that they put a bell on a weather to lead the sheep. So where the turn I don't, comes from. I don't think so. I don't you didn't hear any I, bells. <laughs> well, I'm not even sure. Yeah, it was a waste away. I'm not sure I would hear yeah. them. That's pretty far oh. from your house to down there. Yeah. My uncle had a farm. Yeah. My uncle had a farm. He had a lot of chickens and he used to raise the fighting cock chickens. And he used, to, he, he used to fight chickens and gamble with the Purdue family and the mm -hmm. Kellogg family. They wow. were all into this. Anyway, he used to raise pigs, chickens, and he always had a couple of cows and one horse. And then years later, when he retired from up here, he sold his property and bought the same type of property down in Virginia. And he started raising uh, Black Angus cattle because he was making money at it, more money than he was with the pigs and, 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 the, and the chickens. And then his daughter came up for came down from a visit, and she had a little Jack Russell Terrier. It was the time when Frasier had that dog, and it was very popular. And she paid six hundred bucks for the dog. My do my uncle got rid of all his cows and started raising Jack Russell Terriers. <laughs> it was Way easier cheaper as he got feed. older, which he did for a few years until he hit his eighties. My mother's gonna have Yorkie puppies ready for sale. Oh. Oh, those are so cute. It's got a litter of six, really cute. And the mother mm. is the nicest dog. Those I don't are, like they're nice. Dogs, I've never I, I've never met a Yorkie that wasn't sweet. They're they're I mean, I don't I wouldn't Oh no, them. oh no, there was one Yorkie and it hated me and I hated it. Oh it dear. was unbelievable. Yeah. Bye, Bye personality. Bye, Cindy. Bye. Bye yeah. Cindy. I gotta get going too. I gotta work tomorrow. No. Okay. Bye, Deborah. Good to, good to see you all. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. I night. guess I'll close Thanks, this thing down. Bill. It was good to yeah. be 